Stop scratching your balls. <laughs> Scratching my leg. Uh huh. Anyway, <laughs> we definitely need to edit that part out. <laughs> oh hell no! <laughs> uh, why did I agree to this? Anyways, hello and welcome to the Desert Gamers Podcast. My name is Tyler, also known as Foxtrot, and these are my co-hosts, Jack, Yo, and Brian. Hello. Uh, this is our first episode, and it's being recorded on November the sixth. 2013. I got it right that time. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. October, he's jumping. He's 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 in the Delorean. You know what? I'm just gonna stop. With I'm the a jokes. time traveler, people. You'll you'll get you. He's literally that. Doctor Who. Yes. Who is the right question here? Anyway, we are a video gaming podcast, and we talk about all things video gaming and nerdiness and other such things. And we're not really limited to one platform, so you're not gonna hear us talk strictly about Xbox stuff. You're not gonna hear us stuff. You're not going to hear us talk strictly about PlayStation or PC. It's going to be all-encompassing. We'll talk about all of the things all the time. Does mobile gaming mobile can't count? Is, is that gaming? Some people would argue it is. Fuck them. You guys can talk about it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Uh, also, as Tyler brilliantly pointed out, this is rated M for mature, so if it is not appropriate for your age group, please, leave please now. Do don't look back. Yeah, please, I mean, Fuck if, you, <laughs> if you're going to listen to it, tell your parents it was your choice. <laughs> uh, we're going to go into the news now. No, because we also need to say that we will be responding and bringing in viewer inputted things like That's letters right. and things well, eventually in the future if we ever get any. So if yeah. you're listening to this, feel free to contribute. We will give you our information at the end of the show. Absolutely, and we want to hear from you. We, we want, do. We're so one, much, please. Well, for one, that just sounded so desperate. It was kind of scary. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> they do. I, I think you're kind of... You're okay. Ignore the peanut gallery. Anyway, <laughs> we're... Uh, yeah, absolutely. We're looking for feedback. We're looking for questions. Any way that you want to interact with the show. So please, tell be a what, part of the show. Tell us what you want to hear. We'll exactly. Listen. We are all about the viewership. And we're still, ma- we're still making the podcast. We're still trying to come up with good segments and whatnot. So if you have suggestions... We are evolving. Yes. We're also trying to come up with a name, which hopefully you have heard after when we come up with it. Yeah. Through the power of editing. Anyway, our first uh, bit, we're going to go through some news. And this is going to be news that encompasses... All the way back to about October 29th. Actually, so, even farther than that at the end of it. Is gonna, it? Yeah, we're going to be talking about the GameStop Expo. Oh, God, that's right. Right, that, but that's going to be in a little bit of a later segment. Yes. Okay. So, news. The first thing we're going to start off with is... How the, we are not going to talk about the newest games that just came out. Well, we sort of are. But we're just going to talk about it very briefly because... We have not played some of these new games because we're waiting for the next-gen versions. We have taken a vow of abstinence against these things until the next-gen. Actually, it has more to do with money. So what you're saying is it's enforced abstinence, not a choice. Yes. it's. It, never mind, I'm not going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on! Please, please don't get us angry with the viewers. So one of the, one of the first uh, games that we want to hit on is Battlefield 4. Which it's is, so sexy. Oh, well, I'm yeah. to hit on it. God damn it. <laughs> why do I... Why did I... Hey, baby, God come d- back to my place and I'll slot you in my drive. Wait. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit backwards. Okay. Anyway. Now we ba- know Tyler's innermost thoughts. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. Battlefield 4 released on October 29th and it will be a day one launch title for PS4 and Xbox One. Um... Again, we have not played these, so we can't comment too much on them. We, the three of us, actually did a lot of Battlefield Three, though, oh, yeah. and that yeah. was that was a blast. So I, I imagine it's going to be very similar. Obviously, whenever we get our hands on it, we will be able to talk more about it. We played an <clears> early <throat> build of it at the previously mentioned expo, but we'll probably talk more about that later. We also played in the beta, which was horrific, by the way. That was <laughs> yeah, but betas are betas. Betas yeah. are betas. I, I really hope that. Well, it doesn't matter. We're not playing we, it on We played the Battlefield beta. 3 beta, too. It had a lot of issues, but... It wasn't as ugly as the Battlefield 4 beta. <laughs> I, literally, the graphics were... Am I the only one that thinks so that the graphics were just really, really bad? That was because you joined the game after the skyscraper fell, remember? We no, but even before graphics. the skyscraper fell, I thought yeah. it was pretty... Ew. Uh, beta, you know. Beta, we'll, beta. We'll, beta is beta. 
And the, the Battlefield beta, I know at least Battlefield 3, the purpose of the beta was to test servers and yeah. stuff. They said and that about we the were, Battlefield 4 beta. Yeah. yeah. What Absolutely. we were actually playing was a considerably earlier build than they actually had reached at that point. Right. Because it was intended just to uh, test the servers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that seems to be the big thing that these big companies do when they do open betas because they, I don't think they even listen to the feedback given because they've already fixed most of the things people complain about. Well, and it's important to stress test. Oh, when yeah, it Especially is, for a big, big release like this, you do not want to have a Diablo 3 happen. Oh, yeah. Or, or heck, you don't even want to have a GTA Online occur, which, oh, yeah. can we please mention how they really should have done a beta? <laughs> yeah. They've been really too tight-lipped with that up until it came out. And that they, was... Yeah, it, that was a bad idea. Yeah. Um, so moving on, the next game that we wanted to touch on was Assassin's Creed 4. Um, looking forward to it. Yeah. These two are looking forward to it. I'm kind of, well... Speak for yourself. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I, sorry, I was thinking of someone else I was talking to. Cut the ass out of it, and I'll play that pirate game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I Assassin's Creed 3, it was fun. It didn't intrigue me that much. I mean, the setting, I love the setting, but it just, it didn't feel Assassin's Creed. I don't know. It felt like it didn't really have that much of an identity. So I have high hopes for Assassin's Creed 4. I've heard, I've heard it referred to as kind of a blend between Assassin's Creed and Far Cry 3, and... That gives me high, uh, higher hopes than I had, but we'll see. I'm definitely renting it. Oh, yeah. It looks like it deserves the rent. Yeah. I got it pre-ordered. I love um, naval nautical games, that sort of thing. And you're a pirate. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Assassin's Creed 3. I was playing it. It was it was fun right off the bat. I did not, uh, full disclosure here, I never played an Assassin's Creed game before. I got it because of the setting in the American Revolution and that sort of thing. The first part of the game where you're sailing across the sea and they strike up a shanty on board the ship, and I knew the shanty, and I was just like, I'm going to love this game. And I would really love it if they actually made a pirate game, and lo and behold, they did. <laughs> and you yeah. actually haven't touched the game since. No, i played it since. Oh, have you? i played quite a bit farther okay. than that. I haven't finished it, though. The I parts with Desmond are very boring to yeah. me, because I have no idea what's going on, and I don't care. And by the way, we will do our best to avoid spoilers, but we'll warn you if we're going to talk spoilers, if we catch ourselves in time. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we might not. <laughs> we yeah. will have a spoiler alert somewhere. In yeah, we'll put, we'll put a spoiler alert in. And we'll so probably do a spoiler cast. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll do spoiler cast, but that's oh, going to yeah. be that's gonna be a little later on. And the other big release, of course, is Call of Duty Ghosts. I'm totally not interested in that game. No offense, guys and gals, but I I stopped caring about COD after Modern Warfare 3. The survival mode looked kind of cool, but... That's the alien thing, right? Yeah, yeah. extinction. Or, yeah, it's extinction, right? Mm -hmm. Extraction, dispersion, spongy. Something like that. <laughs> Show research. You guys can. If, uh, um, if people don't know about this already, which is unlikely, but I'm going to say it anyway, it's essentially like zombies mode, except you're fighting off aliens. And that's about all we know as of now. Well, I've watched some footage since it actually came out. Oh, oh really? Have? Oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen some footage of it. It looks a lot slower than zombies does, because in zombies, you burn through those first three waves, and, you know, the zombies are slow, and everything's the yeah. same, and you you, you've pretty much got it down to a beat when you run out of ammo and you start getting the headshots and the knives and all that shit and, and you get your currency down to a science, basically. And from what I saw of the early gameplay of Extinction, it it seems a little too slow. You you fight the same things for far too many waves and there's quite a lot of them and they seem pretty easy at first. And it, it it's not very clear where everything is, as it is in when Treyarch does their zombies game type, because nah. there's places on the walls on the map, and you can tell exactly where everything's are, yeah. because they're they're glowing on the walls. But with what I saw with the extinction, the guns are randomly strewn, as if they were just hmm. placed there, or fallen there from a person dying. Or well, like it that. kind of makes sense to do it that way, but it, it does. But it's they're... it's it's extinction, by the way. Extinction, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I saw was like the, I saw maybe one gun. That was like that. It was just rested in tall grass. Hmm. And everything... It, they did something really cool, though. Everything does highlight when you look at it. Hmm. So things far off, like the, the gun I saw, it was like an AK, I think. And it, it highlighted orange and then blue when he could actually afford it. And it was just rested low to the ground in tall grass. So it was easily missable, even though it was right near the beginning. And one thing is they really 
ramped up the importance on the currency because you could you, you paid everything with currency your your uh, your class abilities you pay your currency for you there's a mini gun on this walkway on one of the first maps and you have to pay to use it even though it's all set up and everything you have to use these simple little traps they're not like convoluted you don't have to turn the power on like in zombies they're hmm. it, it's everything is you've killed zombies now pay to do all the cool things you see around the map well it's and to to be fair Treyarch's had how many games three games now to get this four games world at war black ops Black three games sorry uh to get this right and they are at this point i'd say the masters are doing it well <laughs> but you know but this is infinity ward yeah this this is what's left of infinity ward <laughs> they're, they're trying to take a bite out of the apple that is horde mode yeah and it's <laughs> it's it's not an easy thing to do i mean we're not game developers obviously oh, no. <laughs> and not by a long and time. it's it's got to be uh, just figuring it out is complicated you know and it took cliff blazinski to to come out with horde mode to begin with and i don't know how he did that so success how gears did that so successfully but and it's just taken off and there are so many clones it's hard to say you know what's what's the best way of going about it without doing the same thing that everybody else does it's very very difficult to do i think what they should have done is they should have done it better because they should have made it more unique i mean aliens it's a nice breath from zombies mm -hmm. just to be sure but things everything has a horde mode now and you can't most of the good ones aren't really too similar. Mm -hmm. The Gears of War Horde mode is far different from the Halo one from ODST and Reach and did Halo Four have one? I don't think Halo Four had one. I don't think it did. And the they Zombies the mode is notes. definitely different. The Left for Dead mode is extremely different, even though it is itself kind of a horde mode running through stuff. Um uh the other horde modes even Grand Theft Auto's horde mode, the new one, it's it's different. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it has a well, horde mode. Well, Saints Row, Saints Row 3's horde mode, which was just hilarious. Oh, yeah, Saints Row 3. They, did, was... it, they did that really well. I was surprised. Yes, we're back on track. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they shouldn't have tried to copy the zombies formula as much as they did. Mm -hmm. There is more story to it. It's, but from what I hear, it's, in, it's just like Infinity War to do it a little bit more seriously. Hmm. They, they don't take themselves anywhere near in a funny way there's no humor like there is in zombies it's it's just very dry from mm. what i've seen yeah well okay so we've touched on that so those are the three big 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 releases and we're not going to go through because we're not a uh, dedicated to a certain platform we're not going to go through all the games that have been released this week we'll just hit on the ones that well interest us interest us or that are big enough that we feel that they should be mentioned like Call of Duty and, and uh, Battlefield. Or the people want to hear us talk about. So please, yes. send us letters. We're, I, I'm Letters. Plug. Plug. Send us. Oh, oh, send us emails, plug. not, not same letters. Thing, same thing, same <laughs> thing. Oh, please, please. please. There's somebody who wants to send a Morse code message. <laughs> <laughs> send us your Morse code messages uh, at beep, 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 dash, okay. beep, beep, dash. Yeah. Uh, so right now we're still trying to come up with the name of the podcast. Uh, hopefully we'll have one by the time we get this up. Uh, but for now, if you want to send us responses, feedback, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it's going to be at game night at gmail.com. And that's G-A-Y-M-E-K-N-I-G-H-T at gmail.com. Woo! So we're going to... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about what just happened in the background, listeners. Um, okay, so the next thing that we're going to touch on is Star Citizen, which is a game that I am super excited for. Uh, has it even started development? Because they're still doing crowdfunding. They had, they had some really nice project trailers mm -hmm. to get people into the idea. I don't know if they are... Is it a they or is it just one guy? I think the one I heard it was one guy to begin with. Yeah, it was one guy to begin with and is the guy that did... Um, uh, what's it called? Wing Commander? Wing Commander, yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Um, <laughs> yay for knowing things. Um but yeah, the, the game looks absolutely insane, and to say that PC gaming or space sim genre is dead, completely untrue. And it was this... dead. It's being resurrected because I don't think a game like this would be funded so vastly and so quickly if there hadn't been such a dry spell in the genre. That's true, but, and, you know, and it's not for a lack of trying. The X series is really, really good. Uh, X3, Terran Conflict, I have a blast with that game. But uh... Speaking of which, X Rebirth. 
Oh, actually, that's right. X Rebirth is coming out. That's on our list, isn't it? No, I didn't no. put it on there. You horrible yeah, person. It, well, it comes out. How it, could you? Doesn't it come out on? It no- is called Rebirth. And it also only allows you to be in one ship. I know that's the sad part of it. What? What? Why? Why would you do this? Anyway, I was only interested in the X series because uh, I could improve and gain better ships and eventually get one of those gigantic things and ram it into a space station. Yeah. I never got around to it. People, let me be honest with you. But it was a phenomenal game. Anyway, as I was saying, the spaceship. Si- <sighs> let me try that again. The space sim. You're okay, you're okay. You can do this. You interrupted me. God damn it! I was. <laughs> I had it. Sorry if that crackled. Anyway, crackled? um. Obviously, the space sim genre is not dead. Star Citizen has reached $25 million in crowdfunding. And this marks the biggest month in Star Citizen's crowdfunding campaign that they've had. And I still haven't backed it. What the I heck is wrong with you? I need to back it as well. Um, that, pro- might be the, that might be the most successful crowdfunded thing ever. I think so. Mm-hmm. I think it's not it the is. most on Kickstarter because he did his own thing not kickstarter but right. he, start on kickstarter he did start they, on kickstarter mm. then he moved it somewhere else i think a yeah. lot of people do that they start off on kickstarter to get out there and then, then they do sucker yeah. stuff yeah because kickstarter has a time limit and some people don't want time limits. yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> well i like this guy whose name we don't know which is kind of sad oh it's, like a, it's uh, uh robert like another something. robert something thank you i'm gonna take a robert uh, something thank you for this project that you're doing and congratulations on the 25 million 25 million dollars. I wish I could make 25 million dollars. Yeah. I'm going to take the moment since we're talking about crowdsourcing and people using things other than uh, Kickstarter to uh, plug something plug. that I've backed. Plug. There's a documentary that was made about sort of the history of sword fighting and people who are trying to bring back the lost arts of making swords and of Western martial arts called Reclaiming the Blade. It's really good. It's already out. They're tr- they're working on making a sequel, which was on Kickstarter, failed mainly because of the time limit and because Kickstarter can't take investors. Um, they have a website. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head because I just thought of this now. So just search for reclaiming the blade on Google if you're interested. Yeah. And if we find it um, after we finish show recording notes. the show, we can we can always put the link in there in the show notes for you um anyway so back on to star citizen the new funds will be used to expand the alpha phase which means it will allow for more player slots quote after alpha launch and will allow the team to expand servers across the world so basically what they're doing is they're increasing the size of the alpha that was somewhat obvious and they're going to use it to do better things like get more servers so <laughs> yeah they don't like pull a grand theft auto 5 yeah please don't pull a grand theft auto well not 5. grand theft auto 5 grand theft auto online <clears throat> i guess it's the correct term now the next goal of course is 27 million dollars i, Jeez, that's I know a big jump and that's going to allow the team to implement a character with a transport ship called the banu merchant man i probably horribly botched that anything else about star citizen that we want to add other than it looks freaking amazing and will probably melt my computer that bonnie merchant man apparently cost two million dollars i want one yeah <laughs> I, w- I would like to know why he cost two million dollars but he's probably I, op i really I'll probably nerf him after he comes out <laughs> <laughs> honestly i wouldn't be surprised at this point if he's like how much money can i get from these people if i just add in tiny features for <laughs> lots of money but still looks like a great game yeah uh, it does it looks like a phenomenal game and uh, i really really hope that I remember to back it before they close. <laughs> uh, so, up next, um, the free-to-play Command & Conquer, and also the, the full... No, no, it was the free-to-play, because they had the micro Yeah, this is the free, yeah. It has been cancelled, and the game developer Victory Studios has been closed by EA. All in one fell swoop. Yeah, and our thoughts and hopes go out to these people, because it, losing a job sucks. Let's just, let's just be frank, it does. And you never, you never like to see this happen to any studio... Um, but let's just, all we can do is hope that they'll land on their feet. And I, I imagine they will. And EA is a giant company that can absorb losses. So it makes you wonder why they shut the entire studio. Wow. Well, I mean, it makes you wonder if they I lost have a theory. confidence in the developers, period. Well, just I don't know. A free-to-play Command & Conquer just seemed kind of odd to me. Yeah, but I'm still trying to figure out why they shuttered the developer, too. Here, well, here's, here, here's my idea. From a source that I had, which, I mean, let me just be honest, I, I listen to the Co-Optional podcast every now and then when I get the chance, and they told a little bit more about this story, and at the same day that they closed the studio, over one of them, to celebrate the release of Battlefield 4, they had fighter jets fly over. Oh, 
Really? No announcement to the press, no announcement to the people in the building. They just paid for a bunch of jets to fly over. <laughs> Somehow that seems very EA, although it's... It does. It's... I, I will admit I don't hate EA as much as I used to at this point because they seem to be making some correct moves, but, you know... Fired CEO. That, that, <laughs> that is an... replaced egre- CEO Dickwad. That was one of the... Important yeah, well, that, was an, that is an egregious overspending <laughs> movement, oh, yeah. so... Anyway, um, so it came out uh, sometime last week, I was at Disneyland, um, when this broke, that EA has publicly stated that the game that you should all know about for Xbox One, Titanfall, will be a Microsoft exclusive for its entire lifetime. Now, not long after that, because the internet exploded, Vince Ampella of Respawn, formerly of Infinity Ward, came out shortly and clarified that it is only the first game in the Titanfall franchise that's going to be exclusive, and he doesn't want to limit the sequels. This makes sense, because they're... Even though they were part of Infinity Ward, and uh, they did these big games, Call of Duty, uh, they're a new studio, working on a new IP. It's better to kind of get your feet wet and focus on one platform and do it really, really well than to spread yourself too thin. Definitely. Now, I should point out... It is not Xbox One exclusive. It is Microsoft platform exclusive. So there will be a 360 version, although Respawn's not doing that one. And a PC one, right? And there will be a PC version. And I don't know if Respawn's doing that one. I hope they are. And I'm Well, actually, sh- no, I don't hope they are. Because from what I hear, they don't care much for the PC crowd. Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one of us three who does not care a lick for Titanfall. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been into Giant Mechs. I'm, I'm about done with call of duty sort of formula it just seems like call of duty with mechs and, and i don't care anyway after the crazy person is now done talking <laughs> no! the walking dead season two aren't we all excited i haven't finished season one tell tell, on it. tell i know i know I, you know the funny thing is i go through it and i get i i did the first episode i waited like a few months i did the second episode I would like a few months. And now, eventually, I'm going to do the third episode. Anyway, Telltale Games has announced the second season of the hit game will be played from Clementine's perspective. Ooh. Spoilers, Clementine survives. Thanks, Telltale. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my own fault for not finishing the dang game. I think any news about I think season two include... you should avoid if you haven't beaten the first game. Probably. Because it... It ends in such a drastic way. You need to you need to have beaten it to understand anything about where the series would go. And they know that if they, I haven't said a word, and they know that if they spoil it, I will kill them because I have not finished it. Or actually, truth be told, started it either. The game is phenomenal. <laughs> I know the gameplay is not that great, but the the story is just they, so human. They have single handedly brought back the point and click adventure. They really have. Mm-hmm. They really have, and. I hear that The Wolf Among Us is really good, too. I haven't played it. I have it. heard that, too. I've also heard it seems to be a lot more interesting in terms of being a unique story. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, I like The Walking Dead. I like zombies. But a lot of people find that kind of stale. And yeah. something Well, it's like been a, overdone. Yeah, something like a rehashing of fairy tales seems like a very wise idea. And well, especially this was, making it in such a mature time, kind of manner. And this was based, this the, the Wolf of The Wolf God, Among Us? God damn it, Podcast Unlocked. The Wolf Among, the wolf us, among us. The Wolf Among Us was a... Uh, Based off of a comic book too, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, I don't know this. I, I, the only way I know, reason I know this is because they mentioned it on podcast. I'm going to be the, honest. The whole fable thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the fairy yeah, tales yeah. and old things. Like it, it's any fable too, because it's anything from Red Riding Hood to um to uh, the Headless Horseman. I the, I know so little about the Wolf Among Us. I'm yeah, sorry. I think one of the characters is Ichabod I, Crane. That's I, that's Headless Horseman, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I legitimate I legitimately did not even know the game existed until IGN was like, hey, look, The Wolf Among Us. I'm like, what is this? What? <laughs> oh, Telltale. Right, Walking Dead. Anyway, um... I'm going to do another sidetrack real quick. A Brian sidetrack. God get, damn you. Get used to it. Brian's copyrighted <laughs> trademark uh, sidetracks. All right, so anyway, um, talking about point-and-click adventures, the Myst games, they were awesome. And I have completely given up on Cyan ever making anything again since it's taken the... It, Are they, they still around? They still exist, but they're they're at the point where their website is updated like twice a year. 
and their last giant project that took them quite a while or quite a while was just porting um the original Myst game onto like the iPhone or something. Yeah, it was onto the iPhone. Do they so, do they still do they have a publisher? I don't know. I think so. Okay. I think I heard something about a they, Kickstarter for a game that I heard about Mist, it too, but it's a spiritual successor. Yeah. I don't. I wish I remembered its name. If you can figure it out, let me know because I want to. Oh, I, there I, needs, there I needs thought that's to what be... you were talking about. No, no, no. I was saying I've completely given up on Cyan ever making anything. So somebody out there needs to make a nice, legit, either spiritual successor or a mist clone or whatever you want to call it. Just you know, uh, we need some more of that. If you have any information on any of these types <laughs> of games, please contact us. Yeah, well, Brian will be very happy. Yeah, well, and we'll plug it next time if we get any oh, information. Yeah. But and uh, if you're a developer working on one of these games, also please tell us anyway. On the, on the off chance that yeah, they're actually yeah. listening to us, hey, feel free to um, we'll have an interview. You, yeah, we'll bring you on. We'll <laughs> oh yeah, you, we'll, we'll talk we'll about be, you. We'll be thrilled about that. Yeah, we might need to buy another couch. We're running out of sitting room, but come on over, man. Come on, we'll we'll you get, can sit on the dog. I have another I have another project that I'd like some developer to take on, but I'll talk about that later because we're taking too much time on that <laughs> what is this time you speak of yeah we have unlimited time i don't i don't have we are time lord that would be right? awesome yeah yeah you guys call me the that warping sound in the back is the tardis anyway actually it might have been me blowing my nose i, I didn't know the tardis that. sounded like you blowing your nose i thought it sounded like you farting <laughs> can we please keep it uh, on a on like a middle class level please didn't they give like a mature disclosure warning? We can't be on the middle level with a mature disclosure warning. This uh, is the middle class level. Beer and hot dogs. There's no beer. Or hot dogs. Damn it all. <laughs> I was promised beer and hot dogs, god damn it. You don't even like beer. That's irrelevant. <laughs> anyway, back on track. Moving on. Uh, I don't know when this, I think this was early last week, and I'm confident they have gone far beyond this number by now, but GTA V has shipped nearly 29 million copies. Holy crap. You could give three out of every five people who died in World War II a copy of GTA. <laughs> that is unbelievable how many copies that game has sold, but it is completely and totally understandable. The game is amazing. Oh yeah. So it was so mellowly hyped too. It was just like, eh. Yeah, GTA. it's coming out. Yeah. And usually, you know, the hype cycle begins and you hear about it and you hear about it and you hear about it and it just it was almost a stealth release. Although I know that there were people that were just like, GTA. GTA when's it coming out? Oh my god, it's coming out. Well, that's an advantage too of being such a beloved IP. <laughs> You don't need to do a lot of advertising. All you exactly. have to do is tell game reporters, hey, it exists, and they'll yeah. do all the advertising for you. Yeah, and then they'll also, hound you for more information. <laughs> and then also hint it to Fox News so they can bitch at you and, and yeah. uh, give you bring it to people that don't exactly. know. Exactly. So, so there's that. And yeah. on the heels of that, Take Two announced that it has 10 next gen titles in development. Now, we don't know Holy what those shit. are yet, but that's a lot of titles. I've got to think that one of them's Bully 2. Because they didn't they file for the trademark for that? Oh yeah, that was not a long back. ago. Yeah, um, I got to think one of them's Red Dead too. I'm hoping so. I can't. They need a new I Red would Dead. be so ridiculously happy if that happened. I'd be curious to know how they do it because I unfortunately know how that game ends. <laughs> well, see, what they do. Is I did too, even though I never finished it, which is annoying. <laughs> I never finished it either. Spoiler yeah. alert! Come on, exactly. I, I, hey, we didn't say anything about the actual <laughs> ending. <laughs> yeah. They, they'll probably just do exactly what they did with the first, uh, well, the second Red Dead Redemption. The first Red Dead Revolver was, that was old. The Red Dead Redemption followed the GTA 4's engine, and then they're, they're probably going to make Red Dead Redemption 2, or whatever they're going to name it, if they name that thing weird. Uh, uh, they're going to use the GTA 5 engine, and you'll be able to fly UFOs. <laughs> <laughs> there was a rumor, which is probably 99.9% .9 speculation, in the that, rumors. <laughs> yeah, the, but it's such a cool idea that I have to repeat it. It was going to be called either Red Dead Rebellion or Red Dead Revolution, and it was going to be set in the Southwest during the Civil War. Ooh, that could prequel. be interesting. That does sound Which, interesting. if you've ever seen The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, there's a lot of potential there. If you know anything about the history of the Southwest and the Civil War, which is a very interesting subject. Hmm. And actually, if they ever do make a game about the Southwest and the Civil War... I can promise a little segment on the podcast where I <coughs> talk about that, because I'm a big fan of history, 
Oh yeah. And don't be surprised if I occasionally insert a little uh, Brian's historical commentary into Somet- this podcast. Sometimes it can be annoying, but most of the times it's <laughs> informative. So uh, trust me, I have to put up with it a lot. Um, don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say something. Oh, uh, I can tell you one thing it's not going to be, and that's L.A. Noir too. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, yeah, they kind of had that gigantic scuffle with the developers of L.A. Noir, and they, they kind of hate each other now. Really? Yeah, this was not too long. About this. They, yeah, you didn't hear about this. It was no. a big deal when it happened. I heard about it, but it's so long ago I forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> so don't hope for L.A. Noir too. Okay. At least not from not from Rockstar. Next. 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 I got this. All right. Up next is more shit on a stick news. <laughs> South Park: The Stick of Truth. Sticky truth. Stick of truth. Stick of truth. Stick of truth. Stick of truth. It has been delayed once again. Now, this is this is a bit of news that I could care less about because I really don't like South Park. You mean you couldn't care less? If I'm going to freaking smack you. <laughs> Dim corrections. Yep. Um, I actually somewhat looking forward to that game. It looks amusing, but it's not a big deal if it gets delayed to me. Eventually it will come out. Eventually I'll play it and hopefully enjoy well, it. Well, there's, there's an old game develop, game developer's adage that goes, a game is only late once, but it's bad forever. So if, it, if South Park's Stick of Truth is not something I'm looking forward to. It's something that a lot of other people are looking forward to. I understand that. Um, it's annoying to have to deal with delays, but if it makes the game better, all the better. For um, for those people that are looking forward to it, I really am hoping it's good because I don't think there has been a single actually good South Park game. Has there been a South Park game? There have been tons, actually. Oh, have there? There were this the, is how much I know about South Park. I really don't like South Park. There was... Uh, there was an arcade game on the Xbox a while back. It wasn't too good, but it wasn't super bad. There were N64 yeah, kart racing bad, games. I was going to say that. <laughs> there were some N64 kart racing games with South Park. I think there was something even earlier than that that I don't have a list on hand right now. Yeah. But look it up. There were a lot, and they were all shit. And that's why you don't know about them. We should also mention that uh, it has been delayed to March 6th, 2014. So... Hopefully. When does Titanfall come out? Isn't, Isn't that, that in March? They said spring. But I... Was there a release date? Oh, no, no, no. There's not. I'm thinking of uh, Destiny. Sorry. Yes. Well, they both Sorry. have like a spring release date. Uh, doesn't Destiny have a firm date now, though? They said... No, the only firm thing that they've said is a spring is a spring beta. Okay. And they're going to treat the beta... That's like, right. They're going to treat the beta that's like a launch. launch. Okay. And that that, is, that's where the confusion's coming from. So that would be interesting. Okay, so not that long ago, maybe a month or two, I'm bad with time, time is hard. Um, it came out that the developers, anyone working on, on the Xbox One project, were given special addiction. Special, special addiction. Special yeah. addictions, yeah. Special edition white that Xbox. That seriously should be the Sorry. name of the special edition when they come out with the entire series of Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, special edition white Xbox Ones. Uh, th- those are really really cool cool things. It's it was, you will never be able to buy this particular special edition. I can guarantee you, there's going to be a white Xbox one at some point. You will never be able to buy this special edition in stores. It was only given to people that worked on it. Um, it's got uh, I know on this on it somewhere it says I made this. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I mean it's it's a really neat. I'd love to have one. The special there's one special edition Xbox that you will actually be able to buy, and it is on auction right now for uh, a charity called Games Aid. As of November fifth, the auction had reached three thousand three hundred pounds. That's a heavy auction. Yeah, or okay. British. <laughs> British. Um, it has been reported that there will be a minimum of twenty five unreserved PlayStation fours. PlayStation 4 units at every Best Buy in North America on launch day. That's a lot of extra. Oh, holy cow. Okay, so I'll, I'll tell this story. I actually sat out, not for the PlayStation launch, but for the Xbox 360 launch. I actually sat out in front of a Toys R Us uh, for the Xbox 360 launch. It was a lot of fun. I like sitting out and, and doing the doing the launches, but uh, it was the only place that we could find to camp out in front of them that had them, Okay. <laughs> And we almost camped out in front of the Sears for it, but it's a good thing we didn't because they ended up not getting their units. So, <laughs> there. Anyway, that Toys R Us is now closed. Rest in peace. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun doing that. And they had eight units. Eight? Eight. They eight had extra? They had eight unreserved units there. 
Ooh. And that was considered a lot. Yeah. So 25 is unbelievable. And GameStop's thing is the first shipment is only pre-orders of, at least with games, I know. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because every time I go up there and I ask for, or when I overhear people trying to see if they can get a game without having to reserve it and put money down that day, they say they only ship things that are pre-ordered. Hmm. They only get what is pre-ordered. Huh. Wow, that's interesting. That's why they stress to pre-order. That that might not be for every location. That's just the ones I've been to recently. Hmm. I don't know if that's for consoles either. I don't know if they have any unreserved copies. Now, I will say this is, as as of right now, it's confirmed only at Best Buy stores. And I will say, even though that's a lot of unreserved consoles at Best Buy stores, they're going to go fast. So line up. That is still PlayStation 4, though. They didn't say Xbox One. Correct. They didn't say Xbox One. I'll, but PlayStation 4 is the first launch that we've got coming yeah. out. So, I mean, we may hear more about it as we get closer to Xbox One launch. Um, so the next thing that we've got is uh, the uh, developer of Dishonored, Arcane Studios, is creating a new game, but they will be doing so on the CryEngine. I'm going to pause right here and say that I'm very interested because I am a huge Dishonored fan. In fact, I'm such a huge Dishonored fan that this is my ringtone. Fail. More fail. That's what editing is for. He's still failing. Okay. He has failed horribly. (laughs) Technical difficulties, folks. Play the damn thing. Attention, Dunwall citizens. I think that actually went through. Yeah, Yeah. it looks like it. All right. So the next thing that we're going to hit on is our deals. Deals, 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 deals. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about, uh, probably around the first and middle of the month, we're going to talk about PlayStation Plus. We're going to talk about Xbox Games for Gold and any good gaming deals that we've noticed. So, uh, it has recently been announced. Our new Games for Gold members on Xbox 360 have been announced, and they are A World of Keflings and Iron Brigade. Now, I don't know much about Iron... Uh, excuse me. I don't know much about World of Keflings. I'm assuming it's a lot like that A Kingdom for Keflings where you run around as your avatar and there's a bunch of really tiny people and you... Uh, it's a basically a god game that I never played. That yeah, it's kind of silly. It released on the Xbox Live Arcade pretty early on in the 360 <laughs> launch cycle, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, right after the Avatar. Yeah, yeah. So, it's what made me think that we might someday get an Avatar fighting game like Super Smash Brothers. I'm a little surprised never we happened. never that, that never happened. That would have been fun, but, but it um, never happened. You are correct about your uh, assumption. I know it's a direct sequel to Kingdom of Keflings. Uh, I just haven't played it and I haven't downloaded yet, and, and I really should because I'm. It's free. Why not? <laughs> Yeah, free is good. And then Iron Brigade, the three of us know very much about Iron Brigade because I bullied these two into buying it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was fun, though. It was a... F- oh, my God. Okay, so... It, when we got it, it was it called was, Trench. It, exactly. It was called Trench, but because of a copyright dispute, I believe in France, although don't quote me on that, uh, they renamed it Iron Brigade. So uh, what it is is it's kind of a mashup between third-person shooting and tower defense and horde mode. And horde mode, yes. Well, that's Tower Defense in a nutshell. Yeah, that's true. It's just a different... Oh my goodness. Type. That game is just so much fun. More of a blast... A blast with friends, of course. Everything's better with friends. But that game is a lot of fun. And for free dollars, that's free, as in zero dollars, just get it. Please. Yeah. Do yourself a favor. It, it is a lot of fun. It didn't have a whole lot of replay value, but... At least one playthrough, maybe two, it's really fun. Yeah. yeah, they tried to put in an actual horde mode, but... That uh, kind of killed it? Well, it, it not, didn't... Not necessarily it didn't it, really it, kill it. It didn't work. No, well, well, the biggest problem with the horde mode is, with the tower defense, everyone knows the basics of tower defense, you are defending something. Well, in a horde mode, you don't want to be defending something. Yeah. You know, and they forgot to take out the defense part of horde mode. <laughs> the only thing you need to be worried about defending in a horde mode is yourself. And they forgot that. We haven't revisited the game, though, so maybe they've done something about that. That is true. The last time we touched it was just after it changed its name. Yeah. When yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So and I thought... trying to figure out what the hell happened. Yeah. I really like. Well, the name. no, I knew, I knew that it was, that it had been changed to Iron Brigade. Yeah. yeah more uh-huh. guys about it. I really liked the original name because it, it was called Trench because the mechs you piloted were called Trenches. Trenches. And yeah. I thought that was really cool because it had this World War One kind of vibe. And it started you off by getting your trench. Yeah, and then your trench lifts off from the ground, and you're in a mech suddenly. It's it was just a really 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 fun game. Oh yeah, and, and one of the rare mech games that yeah. we had Brian into. <laughs> it was so fun that I actually enjoyed a mech game. Uh, I would also like to point out that I really do appreciate Microsoft's game with games with gold initiative, but can we please be real and take a look at what PlayStation Plus is doing? 
Has Microsoft put anything on, ga- on uh, Games with Gold that is newer than 2010? I don't think so. When did Dead Rising come out? Uh, the original? Two. Oh, two. Um, that might have been 2011. No. They still haven't put anything out anywhere close to what PlayStation is doing with PlayStation Plus. No, but at least they have put out some really big titles like Halo 3. Yeah. That was oh, one. gosh. Which I forgot to remind you to download. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was free. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Not anymore. I'm not a big Halo fan. Well, yeah, but free. <laughs> free is free, bro. I'm ne- I will never argue with free. <laughs> anyway, um... What about free herpes? Uh... And no, I'm not offering. I don't have any. <laughs> so he says. Anyway... He's defensive about this. Yeah, right. <laughs> the next is, uh... PlayStation Plus perks. One of those being... Is that a cold sore? Cin- Cin- Cinemore. 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 It's not a cold sore. Your mom hits me. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Cinemore, the Cinnabon simulator. Wait. No. Uh, I have no idea what this game is. Okay, Cinemore... <laughs> It's a cross-platform game. It's on. It's on 362. It is a the very 362. Is that a new console coming out as well? I thought it was called the Xbox One. Am I bad at my job? There's a Catholic version called the Xbox One. If, if you <laughs> if you hear banging on a wall, that's me banging my head on a wall. Anyway, or um, it might be our brains being splattered onto the wall by Jackson. Well, you guys don't have the shotgun yet. Yet. Yes. Yet. I know you two are preparing for the zombie apocalypse. We have to. How do you know we don't have one? I'm more concerned about the Canadian apocalypse. <laughs> oh, dear God. I haven't thought of that. We're going to take over your country, eh? <laughs> <laughs> that was a really bad... Can- set up in cannons, eh? That was a really bad Canadian accent. Anyway, okay. so an accent? Oh, shit. <laughs> Bonk! Ow! Cinemora. It's a 2D shooter set in a diesel punk world. I'm bleeding from my butt. <laughs> Can we please be taken seriously? But I'm bleeding. Anyway, it's a 2D side. It's a 2D shooter set in a diesel punk world. You play as an animal pilot and shoot a lot of shit down. Wait, animal pilot? Animal please, pilots. Please, please, do you pilot animals or are you an it's animal? It's a furry game. <laughs> are we going to have these moments of silence where we just ignore his jokes? <laughs> yes. Anyway, That's it's... Thing, this is what happens when I get tired. So, yeah. This won't be a norm, probably. Yeah, well, probably. I kind of hope it is. It's kind of uh, funny. Unless they always do it when I'm... Barely staying awake. Animal pilots think Star Fox just a little more serious. Okay, I was thinking I couldn't. It, it's, it's phrased poorly. It could be anything. It could be animals being the pilots. It could be someone piloting the animals. It could be an animal piloting the person that's piloting the animal that's piloting a pilot. You know what? It's just easier to call you stupid. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, it's it is a really well beloved game. I have not played it. <laughs> So, but this gives me a chance to because I have PlayStation Plus. Um, what makes it unique is it has very, very gorgeous visuals. But the real unique thing is that there are no lives, there's no health in the game. It's all time based. So the timer is constantly going down, whether you're sitting there doing nothing or not. Killing enemies will increase the time, and getting hit by enemy fire decreases the time. And this is a really intriguing thing. My only concern with it is that I hate time limits so much. I have a question about that, though. Hmm? How is that any different than just having a health bar that increases when you kill people and has a permanent drain? It's not. It's not. It's the same Fundamentally, thing. this kind of gameplay mechanic is used a lot, but I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all in it's all in the portrayal because a lot of these things are just different types of ways to represent yourself to the player. Right. Brian has suffered from a coma slash stroke <laughs> slash heart attack. You can do that all at once, guys, so be careful. No, no, you can't. It's a Brian specialty. It's a special move. Okay, well, anyway, uh, so... Yes, yes. Um, Beginning. Cut! <laughs> yeah, cut. It's, in the, it's on the front page. It's on the front page. Cut, you're to yeah. No. What? Where? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reading fail. All right. Uncut. So, that's it for news. I think we've covered most of the interesting things that have happened so far in the past week, week, half. week and a half or so. Uh, if I missed anything from today, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was really busy. Yeah, I do most. I do some of the. It's well, hard. It's hard. To I did this. all of the show planning for this episode. So. We do this thing like a day in advance, so that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to keep it up more as current as possible. Yeah. But sometimes things slip through the cracks. Things happen. Yeah. So or we just gonna... think that things are not that interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to switch over to our next segment, which is 
Ryan, what are you playing? What games have you played lately? Uh, lately, I've actually been playing mostly Skyrim with a bunch of mods because. So I've heard. So, yeah. Sad fact is, it's only recently that I got a rig that could run Skyrim on PC because I've been playing on it. I played it almost the entire game on Xbox 360 before. I uh, finally have a good gaming rig, and so I've been doing Skyrim with about 160 mods enabled. Didn't start off over 300? No, or no. Or was it around 2? No, I've never, I don't really take anything away, so it's increased. Oh, I thought you started off with a bunch of, like, started things off with the same things. I started off with, like, 120. Now, there okay. were still, the, that includes the ones that are the same that I actually, some of which I don't have turned on. Oh, okay. I am mistaken then. Steam's workshop, because I haven't tried anything on the Nexus yet. I do want to, but right now I'm just kind of being lazy and just doing stuff on the Steam workshop. Which, I have comments about the Steam workshops. First of which is, they need something besides subscribe. There needs to be like a watch mod button. Because some of these mods where I'm like, oh look, this sounds interesting, but it has bugs. The person says, you know, I'm currently working on fixing this. I don't want that in my game. But I want to be able to find it later and go, oh, look, they fixed it. Now I want to try it. Or if I'm looking through all the search results, but they're not very good search engine, I want to be able to go, okay, well, that's a crafting mod. That's a crafting mod. That's a crafting mod. I want to be able to select all of them and put them in like a wish list or, well, not wish list, but some sort of bookshelf, if you will, of mods. And then go back later and pick the one I actually want to put in the game. I don't want to subscribe to all of them because quite a few of my... Uh, Skyrim mods I subscribe to as a bookmark, uncheck the data file, and have yet to use and probably never will. I think you can just put them in a collection. Oh yeah, Because the collections but... aren't put in your subscription box. Right, but it would just be nice if there was a bookmark button. Well, that's pretty much what it is, that's what the collections are. You bookmark them into your own separate little collections. Hmm. At least as far as I've used it. Nah, I haven't actually used a collection. I know you can view other people's collections, but I don't know if you can make them private. Hmm. But like people have made their own collections where mm. they conglomerate their mods together and basically give you a whole new experience by downloading the whole collection at once. Yeah. My other comment is that uh, my experience is digging through all this is that modders don't like Steam Workshop very much. Modders seem to be having a lot of trouble with the Steam Workshop. It's very exclusive. They, mm -hmm. you, there's very exclusive things that you have, not exclusive. There's very particular things that are not allowed. Yeah. And well and I'm not talking so much about things like, um, obviously, adult content they don't allow. They don't allow copyrighted content. But those make sense. Steam doesn't have much of a say in that matter. I'm talking more about things like size restrictions on mods, where there's, it's not uncommon for um, a mod to say something like, okay, we, we used to have the whole thing hosted on Steam, but they wouldn't let us do host a mod anymore because it got too big, so you have to download this .bsa file from another website and put it in there and so it gets to the point of you might as well be using the Nexus so a lot of modders have said that too though it's very common to see in the Skyrim mod page this mod is no longer supported it won't work go get it here on the Nexus <laughs> so Steam really needs to change this workshop system because right now it's got serious problems and it can just not compete with the existing sites they have for mods Okay, right, back to other things I'm playing. Now that I did my segue into, uh, <laughs> you've been uh, you've workshop. been playing the Dragon Commander game, right? I played Dragon Commander. Oh yeah, I've been wanting to try that game. Is it any good? It's amusing. The RTS is very spammy and quick reaction RTS, so it's, I prefer the sort yeah. of yeah, tactical slower. RTS. But if you're super lazy, you can put it on casual mode and just destroy everything with your dragon, <laughs> which is what I've been doing. Because, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's essentially a combination of kind of a RPG monarch sim type thing and a strategy game. Where you're this... Sorry, special guest appearance by Mojo, Mojo the, the Dog. dog. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, anyway, uh, you're this half-dragon, half-human bastard son of the former king who was a very good monarch and who, you know, his the horrible children are warring over the throne. And there's a lot of inspiration from StarCraft in it. Not in the RTS part, but in the, um... You just got a lot of people's interest. <laughs> in the interaction between... And I'm talking StarCraft 2, not StarCraft 1. 
in the interaction between missions. Because basically, oh, really? you're on a flying ship, a magical flying ship, which of course. is very similar to the ship from um, StarCraft Two, and that you can move, you move from room to room, and there's people in different rooms that you talk hmm. to. Yeah, and this you, is you wind up you can wind up um you know at one point you have to do a political marriage in there, and the amusing thing is uh. Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> It's not really a spoiler, considering it was in the <laughs> advertising for the game, pretty much. Get but, married. Um, yeah. Oh, it's by the people who did the Divine Divinity series, by the way. So if, if you're uh, a fan of that series. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was like a Divini Divinity 2 to Dragon Knight or something like that mm -hmm. that I never played. But um, this is set in the past of, like, a sort of steampunk type past. Now with oh. Flying Dragon Commander. Hello, Mo. <laughs> Another <laughs> guest appearance. By Mo the American Bulldog. He is now me. licking my face. <laughs> <laughs> Mojo, we're doing a podcast. Welcome to the podcast, Mo. What have you been playing lately? <laughs> oh, jeez. He's on the couch. <laughs> yeah, Mojo likes to do that. Mojo anyway. thinks he's a lap dog, despite being about 50 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, um... Lost my train of thought. But, okay, so... you. You have to deal with politics, because there's a bunch of different races in your empire... And you're the emperor, and you represent the human, and apparently the dragon, but um, which of which you are the only one that has appeared in the game so far. But um, yes, Mo has made me into his pillow. Aww, <laughs> don't cute. It's quite cute. He, he's the talking dog. Whoever the dog sits on is allowed to talk. <laughs> apparently, he's sitting on all three of us. <laughs> no. You represent the humans, and there's a bunch of other species in the world. And you have representatives of the members of the species that are under your control. So there's elves, there's dwarves, there's lizard people, there's imps, and there's undead. But, and you have to make political decisions, and each faction favors different things politically. And uh, the funny thing is the politics and the opinions are all ripped from the modern world with an amusing comedic fantasy twist cuz the whole the whole game does not take itself seriously which like you don't the, want it to something yeah. dragons with jetpacks yeah. please don't take yourself seriously um, the uh the undead are the hyper religious conservatives of the world because their idea is they were they were resurrected from the dead by their god and Given the the true the sort of the the true life, because they were righteous or whatever, but um they of course favor anything that supports their religion, oppose anything they consider a vice or a challenge to the authority of their gods. So they're the religious fundamentalists of the I'm world. Apparently, being past the talking torch, <laughs> the dog is now on Jackson's lap. Oh, and very heavy, <laughs> and digging into my kidney. Fifty pounds of wool. <laughs> Ow, ow, oh, yeah. mojo. So, then there's the elves who are the... and Oh, and everything is played up to 11. So, chances are you will find one or more portrayals, if you take yourself too seriously, you will find one or more portrayals of your own political opinions to be offensive. But, don't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> anyway, um, the <laughs> elves are the stereotypical weed-smoking hippie liberals of the... In fact, one of the political decisions you can make is whether or not to legalize their weed. Um... <laughs> Oh, so God. they are the liberal weed smoking hippies of the world who are huge environmentalists. And then next are the dwarves who speak with outrageous Scottish accents, which is a little annoying. But um, they always speak with outrageous Scottish accents. Except in not Dragon bad, Age, not <laughs> as bad as May Ren, who is not an elf. Both have to say it at the same time. I haven't played that game really. <laughs> anyway, I don't know these things. Speaking of Dragon Age, Dragon Age Inquisition, yay! Probably talk some more about that some other time because yeah, I really like it. Point. Anyway, we don't want to take up too much time. Um, so the dwarves are the sort of business conservatives, pro capitalist, small government kind of pro family type. So the if the if the um, undead are the religious republicans and the uh, the uh, elves are like the ooh, what's a good example? The sort of be liberal. Yeah, the California Democrats, hmm. the uh, the Southern California, LA Democrat type thing. Anyway, that stereotype. 
then the dwarves are the pro business Republicans of which is hilarious to think. I'm just imagining a dwarf in like this ridiculous normal regular looking suit with his hair all nice and combed. <laughs> oh no, it's not a regular suit. He's blinged out. <laughs> He has a dead fox on his shoulder, actually. Doesn't he have, like, blingy oh, rings? Or remember? Or... Yeah. That looks over your shoulder once when you're playing it. Yeah. It? And then the um, the other races, the lizards are a bit more libertarian type, mainly interested in individual freedoms. The imps are the pro-science skeptic type, and but at the same time, they're kind of crazy about the explosives, so they often just take really weird positions. For some reason, Morden <laughs> just popped into my head. <laughs> But um, it's yeah. fun in a really kooky way. I could see a lot of people thinking it's just stupid, but I enjoy it. It and, looked um, interesting. You could do funny things too, because like you have to do a political marriage at one point, and the imp princess doesn't show up because she apparently blew herself up on accident. <laughs> the undead princess is a talking <laughs> skeleton with lipstick, <laughs> and the dwarf princess and the elf princess are somewhat more appealing. The lizard princess. It depends on your fetishes, I suppose. Oh. But, um... <laughs> ay, 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 ay. But, I chose the elf princess in my playthrough, and there's an amusing sort of mechanic where you can either support the upbringing and the culture that they come from, or sort of convince them to try to be more cosmopolitan. And I went a bit more cosmopolitan with the uh, elf princess, which resulted in the hilarious... Uh, complaints from the elf ambassadors. She violated like every taboo of the elves, and just pissed them off. But it's it's amusing. I I personally don't find the RTS as appealing as the political game, which is the only reason I'm still on casual. But uh, I just blow through the battles. The battles themselves, some people will find interesting though, because like I said, it is somewhat spammy RTS. Which yeah. I can enjoy that sometimes, yeah. but, you know, a tactical RTS is always going to appeal to me. With building location points, you yeah. know, you have to you capture locations and you can put buildings on them. Um, the resource, there's only one resource, it's recruits. You own recruitment centers, which are built on special points to get more recruits. And interestingly enough, there's a limit to the max amount of recruits that can be gathered in a game. Hmm. So if you gather recruits faster than the enemy, you will have more recruits in the entire game. Hmm. Which gives you an advantage. And recruits are used for everything, from building buildings to units to, and this is the interesting part, summoning yourself <clears throat> into the battle as a dragon. Because if you press the R key, sacrifice 20 recruits, which I guess you had a snack before battle, I don't know. <laughs> but you turn into a dragon and you can fly around the battle and use your dragon powers to buff your troops, to attack the enemy, just <clears throat> smash everything. It depends on how you build your dragon. But, um... That's actually a lot of fun, and it is it, it handles surprisingly well, because it, it switches from the RTS camera to a third-person follow-the-dragon perspective. It's and very it, seamless, too, right? It's very seamless. You just press the button, and you're a dragon, and it just moves the camera. Now, is there any, There's is, no re-rendering or anything like that. Is there any multiplayer? There is multiplayer, um, cooperative, and I believe <clears throat> versus as well. Oh, wow. If it ever goes on sale, I might pick it up, because the game is... Cooperative and versus do not have the political element no. well, in RPG. Yeah. Well, yeah, so it's the it's part I hard, like. But it's kind of hard to to have that in a cooperative mm -hmm. uh, setting. So. Oh, and by the way, I should point this out too: the battles are fought with RTS, but each turn, which is when you do the political decisions and stuff in your ship, each turn you also do movement of armies on the tactical map, and you can auto resolve battles. You can actually only fight. One live action battle per turn. So it's so kind of, there's more than one battle. You're gonna have to rely on your army and auto resolve hmm. or hire one of the hmm, generals. That's interesting. Hire. So it's so it's kind of like a battle for Middle Earth two or something people will be more familiar with a uh, Total War. In, yeah, in it is somewhat the, like Total yeah. War. In in that term, and mm -hmm. every other term is completely different. But uh, well, yeah, but I mean, in, in terms of how the main gameplay mm -hmm. mechanics work. Speaking of Total War, I will finish up my what I've been playing lately. With uh, thirty minutes later. <laughs> yes, yes. This has been somewhat long. Sorry, uh, I'm it's not our sorry. First time. Come on. <laughs> but um, we're sorry. This podcast is so long. <laughs> no, I have been playing Napoleon Total War Darth Mod, uh, <coughs> which is a collection of mods. To because actually, I found that Rome Total War was kind of a disappointment. Really? 
Yeah. How so? Um, well, for one thing, I've never been as big a fan of the, or I haven't been as big a fan of the sword and archery and that, you know, stuff, Total Wars, since I played Empire Total War. Yeah, it's kind of hard to go back. I like the guns. The guns in Total War are amazing. But here's the thing. I was really looking forward to Rome Total War because I'm a huge fan of Roman history. We should also mention that it is Rome Total War 2. Two. Yeah, not the original Rome Total War, which is way back way. He was looking forward to the game that was released like 10 years ago. (laughs) Something like that. But anyway, so Rome 2, there were a lot of bugs. There are still... Six I saw patches that been, later, I believe. Yeah, I saw there that they've been patching still a lot it like of bugs. crazy. There's, yeah, the forum is full of discontent. I mean, that's not surprising, but there's just surprisingly... That's what forums are for. There's a surprisingly small number of people rising to their defense. Hmm, that's unusual. But, um... Because usually, usually uh-huh. even really bad games get, get the defenders because they have to justify the purchase. I've been one uh-huh. of those people. <laughs> Le- Legends of Pegasus. But, uh... <laughs> not that game. <laughs> I still feel bad about that. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> um, there, there's just one thing that particularly bothered me was that they had said, the developers of Total War, had said that the new naval system would prevent what they called the ninja amphibious attacks, where an enemy army can just zip past your huge navy, land on your coast, and conquer everything. Somehow they made them worse. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, there was actually a thread on the forum that was, when did you get first get that sinking feeling playing Rome 2? Obviously, biased, right? It's a forum, but my response to that was, when uh, an enemy army embarked into the water, sailed past both my fleets, landed and sacked my city all in one turn, <laughs> and it sailed very close to both my fleets. So, that was kind of a disappointment. But anyway, because of that, I've been playing uh, Napoleon Total War. And, uh, it's a lot more interesting on really hard mode. <laughs> Been preparing to launch an invasion of England with my old pals, Marshal Lefebvre and, Le- and uh, Davou. But, uh, that's enough Total War talk. <laughs> that historian. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the French. So much like I will only play Rome in Rome Total War, hmm. I will only play France in Napoleon Total War. Well, that's <laughs> very, very... Long. Strategy-centric gaming long. you've been doing, except for Skyrim. Skyrim, on the other hand, well, mm-hmm. you've, you've been strategizing the application of mods, so. <laughs> anyway, anyway, moving well. on. Mojo, what have you been playing lately? He's been playing my lap, and... I, um, um, that bestiality judgment. Uh, might not want to say that. It's, only legal. Although I will, it's only legal in Sweden. I, <laughs> I will say that I have learned a very valuable lesson, and that is to never be around Mojo when I'm wearing black. Because <laughs> Mojo, being an American bulldog, is almost completely white. He's almost his... completely white, and he sheds year-round. Yes, my yeah. dog does the same. Anyway, this is not a dog podcast. Welcome to Dog Talk. Yeah, we welcome, talk to, welcome to the dog cast. Um, what am I playing? I've been playing absolutely friggin' nothing because I've been on vacation. I was at Disneyland. Anyway, uh, let's see. Well, before I went to Disneyland, I bought uh, Sir, You Are Being Hunted, which I haven't touched. Based on my recommendation. <laughs> well, based on your Let's Plays. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Tyler has Let's Plays on his YouTube channel. Yeah, another thing Fine. I'll probably buy um, when it becomes cooperative. Oh, yeah, it's going to it's gonna go co-op. I have uh, four episodes of a somewhat short Let's Play going up. Uh, it's been up there for about a month now. Yeah, about that. About uh, I've, that got, I've got some more episodes of it planned when it finally comes out with co-op. I'm going to be playing that alongside Jack here. Uh, you can find my channel at youtube.com slash foxtrotfilms. That's F-A-W-K-E-S-T-R-O-T-F-I-L-M-S. Uh, if that doesn't work, then somehow the films got removed and it's just foxtrot. Um, uh, the other the other thing that I've been playing... Well, I haven't been playing. The other thing that I bought along with uh, Sir, and I'm just going to shorten it to Sir because it's got a really long title. And it's very classy. We yeah. can call it just Sir. Yeah, and <laughs> you'll probably laugh at me at, the, at this, but I bought Euro Truck Simulator 2. Ugh. Why? But, but, it's like it's like the crack of video games. It is. It is so friggin' addicting, and I don't know why. I had no interest in it at all, and then these guys played it, and they became so addicted to it that now I am scared of it and will not touch it because <laughs> I was just I don't do drugs. I was just <laughs> like Brian. I saw Jack, and he just got hooked on it. It was just the demo. He played it for five hours straight. Yeah. Well, here's the funny thing. Okay, so I I played the demo, and I'm like, I'm playing the demo. I really enjoyed it. For some reason, I really enjoy mundane shit like this. 
whenever I was a little kid, uh, I played a game. You, you, this may resonate with the PC crowd called Midtown Madness. Ooh, such and a fun game. I never did racing in that game. I always did free roam, and I would do random things like driving around the city, pretending I was a city bus driver. The Madness series of games, those were that Phenomenal. was Midway, right? Yeah, yeah, Midway made those yeah, good that games. Was midday. But uh, RIP so Midway. I. I knew whenever I saw Euro Truck Simulator that I was going to get hooked on it, but I had to try it anyway just because it intrigued me. And uh, so I started playing the demo, and I'm th- and I'm playing and I'm playing and playing. Five hours later, I'm like, "Does this dim- demo? That is very uncomfortable." <laughs> <laughs> Mojo is stepping in a very awkward place. Mojo, he's, why are you doing? He's very intently listening to Jackson. He he, he does yeah. that while trying to distract me by putting his paw in a very uncomfortable place. Mo has an unfortunate habit of attacking people's balls with his feet. <laughs> We're said, working on it. We're yeah. working on it. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh yeah. So five hours later into the demo, I'm like, does this demo not have an end or something? And I just assumed that it was a very very long demo. But then Tyler played it and said he only lasted like two hours. I eventually broke down and played it, and I just barely got away without being addicted. But mine only lasted about you two were, hours. You, you two were you were so addicted. I got out of it. Dire four, not an addiction. I played still, the demo through, and I didn't touch it again. Are you still gonna buy it? No. I went to the Euro Truck Simulator rehab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so he only played it for like two hours, and I think I figured out what it was. He followed the eighteen step. The game, uh... I had my trucker cap surgically removed. Anyway, the game the game expects you to take out a loan and buy your own truck. I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to buy a truck outright with my own money. So I never bought it. I never got a loan for a truck. And I think that's why it lasted so long. And then it finally said, okay, we get what you're doing now. Go away. <laughs> buy our game. Which I'm fine to do. And I have. I've done so. Uh, the other it, thing... It goes on sale a lot. So yeah. you, if you like mindless mundane things and you have time to waste on it, buy it. it it's it's a there's something game. weirdly addicting about it it's hard to describe really it is um and of course the other thing i've been playing is gta 5 oh yeah of course <laughs> yeah i've been playing some of that too yeah but I think we all have that. yeah but uh, attempting to play gta online without wanting to scream but thankfully they reduced the death penalty cost Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, thank was you. Like, that was a murder. And the, the it was so annoying to get killed by a troll respawn, get killed by a troll again. When you're like, "Fuck you!" I just want to rob a convenience store. Although I, we had Tyler and I have a really awesome convenience store story in GTA Online. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So we were we went in to rob a convenience store, and we saw these two guys park outside, and we're and Tyler says to me, "There are two guys outside. They're probably going to kill us as we come out." And I'm like, well. What are we going to do? We're already holding up the stupid convenience store. <laughs> so we went on with the convenience store. One of the guys killed us. And we went on. It took uh, about 30 minutes for us to get our cars out of the impound. Yeah, that's a hassle. It's a pain. It's a little fun sometimes, though, if you yeah. do it right. But it's usually just... people will fuck with you while you try to get out of there. Yeah, and the, it... and the gate fucks up and you get stuck inside. The yeah. cops mow you down. It's but uh, so we spent that long amount of time trying to get our cop- cars out of the impound. But we were both by that point really, really pissed off at this guy for killing oh, yeah. us. So it was early in the game, all we had were pistols. Two thousand was a big haul, and you lose <clears> it by dying, and it it was not fun. So I rem- I fortunately remembered the name of the the gamer tag of the guy that killed us. So I said I know who he is. It was of both of the guys you remembered, but one of them left before we got. Oh, okay. I I couldn't. I didn't remember that. But, uh, anyway, so I said, well, I know that there's a way to look them up. So I looked them up. They were not, the guy was not far away from us. He was a little further south than we were. So I'm like, this guy pissed me off. We're going to go kill him. So I guess he did not expect us to do this. So we drive up to him. I don't remember what he was doing. I think he was in the middle of the cop chase. Yeah, he was in the middle of something. Anyway, we drive up to him. Tyler just mows him down, which was so... It felt so good to do. And then... Continue. And then, uh... Tyler blow, blew his car up. I was pissed. Yeah. And cars, as you know, if you've played GTA Online, it was, it's it a was one-time the, thing. You know, you've got to deal with insurance and whatnot, so... And it was a player car, so I lost some some of the, the good player rep or whatever they did. But I didn't He care. deserved it. He deserved it. <laughs> and then I discovered the text messaging system in the game, and I texted him and said, Don't mess with us again. And then we left. Yeah. No, we didn't leave. He left. Oh, he left. Okay. He left yeah. not long after that. We just had fun after that. Yeah. 
Uh, but I, I have a lot of good GTA stories, and we'll probably get to those. Yeah, we'll get to those at some point. We're not going to... The podcast has already gone very long yeah, tonight. We, we've gotten this a little bit farther than we wanted. I don't mind it being long, but you you people probably do. Yeah. You guys are probably doing stuff while you're listening to this. Right. And you might be getting a little bit bored of our voices. Yes. I know uh, that they can be tiring. <laughs> while we're still talking GTA, I want to throw in a quick little story that's sort of GTA related. I had Hello? a GTA experience in real life. And no, it wasn't robbing a convenience store and then hiding under a canal. Tunnel. What have you not been telling us, Brian? <laughs> what have you done? Why are you That here? explains the, all the police officers near the canal tunnels over there. <laughs> so, I was sitting in a light, uh, what was it? Monday. No, Tuesday. Yesterday. Okay, so I was sitting in a light, and um, the Dodge Charger goes past. And then another Dodge Charger. <laughs> and then another Dodge Charger. Oh my god, GTA has created the glitch in real life! Yep. Two more Dodge Chargers said, yep, it was just like GTA. Five of the same car with different paint scheme. Ugh, that just sounds horrifying. <laughs> Can you imagine if that became a real life thing? I wish you would have had a vine or something. Yeah. Because <laughs> that would have been cool. But that usually. would have been funny. Yeah. So, uh, so that's what I'm playing. What are you playing, Tyler? Uh, I've been playing quite a few things aside from GTA V. I've actually been playing a lot of the Stanley Parable, which mm. well, it started off as a Half-Life 2 mod. I downloaded the demo for that, but I haven't tried it yet. The demo, it's hard to call that a demo. That is its own experience. Really? Um, yes, the, the demo has, it is made from basically the ground up for demo purposes. Uh. Without spoiling too much, it is, like, even if you have the full game, I recommend playing the demo because the demo is just... Freaking awesome. I didn't even know that it had a demo, so I'm gonna have to try it. Oh yeah, and but, I'm also um, gonna have to get the mojo hair off me. <laughs> for those who don't know, the Stanley Parable was a mod for Half Life Two quite a while back, and it got stellar reviews. And so the creator decided he was going to remake it and make it its own standalone thing out of the Source Engine. And it is so much more beautiful now without the, what, 12-year-old Half-Life 2 textures. Oh, God. And it has its own textures, its own sounds, its everything. It, it's still, it, you can still tell it's a Source game, but it, it is one of the most unique games of all time. And I haven't felt this, I mean, it's so similar to the, to the, to the mod from a few years ago. But I, I don't want to talk too much about it because it spoils the experience. Yeah, it's and you don't I, want to spoil. It's why I didn't do a left play of it. It's something you need to actually play. And I'm not going to say it's a, a fresh experience from the mod. It's the mod expanded and enhanced. It has a lot more endings, a lot more dialogue, a lot more places to go, a lot more choices to make. And it, it, it's, it's got a very unique feeling for a game. And I haven't felt a feeling like this because I, I've never actually played the mod. Anyway, the Stanley Parable, it is a wonderful game. It is, oh, I wish I had it on hand. It's either $15, $25. It's around there. I think it's 15 It is worth the money. I haven't felt uh, it has such a unique feeling for a game. I haven't felt it since Anti Chamber, which is a very intriguing puzzle game. If you like puzzle games, I never played Anti Chamber. You need to play Anti Chamber. You really do. I have one question about the Stanley Parable. Go for it. Why have you waited until now to tell me about this awesome? <laughs> I told you about the Stanley Parable when I bought it. Did you? Yes. No, oh, I don't remember. So, are we? Are was that all you've been playing? Oh no, no. That, okay. It's a. It's not exactly a time-consuming game. You, it, you play it, you finish it, it starts directly back over. You play it again, and you basically just keep going until you want to stop. It has a lot of replayability, even if you play the same ending over and over again. The voice acting, the delivery, it's it's perfect. It is, I, I dare say, it's a masterpiece. Um, 10 out of 10, Fox Rod. Fox Rod approved. Fox Rod approved. Uh, let's see, what else have I been playing? I've been playing a lot of Civ Five, Brave New World. Uh, Not much to say about that. It's uh, it's Civ Five. Yeah. It's a Brave New World. I'm trying to finish the game so I can get all the new stuff in and figure it all out. Um, it's pretty fun. It, it it is. It's really fun. It's I a nice. In a few weeks though. It's a nice fresh experience from the regular Civ Five and Gods and Kings. Okay, yeah, I made a lot of new stuff to it. I made that voice. I made that blah noise just because when I. Play Civ. I usually enjoy it most of the time, although not with these two because we have yet to finish a game with Civ Five. It is so hard to finish that game. It's so we, hard. I don't think we've even gotten past the like third era. Yeah. So. It's so time. So my time favorite thing is making silly religions and naming my cities after a scheme. <laughs> oh, those are that, that that's half the fun of Civ. Yep. 
So I, I'm not. I actually I satisfied Tyrion's request from Game of Thrones. I actually created the god of tits and wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Anyway, um, after that segue, <laughs> let's see. Um, I've also I also finished a playthrough of some of the old Call of Duty campaigns. I felt a little nostalgic with ghosts coming up. I'm not exactly the hugest Call of Duty fan. I have a little guilty pleasure with some of the campaigns. <laughs> I played through... Well, Modern Warfare's campaign was legitimately good. The story was yeah. actually really good, and to I have had... a player death like that was really amazing. Oh, yeah. And it's just in Modern Warfare 2, they decided to do it five times yeah. or so. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's very impressive the first time you play it, but then you go back and think about it, and it's like... Man, I died a lot. <laughs> it Where feels was like the a, game over screen. It was supposed to happen in multiplayer. I was just getting ready <laughs> to say that, you yeah. bastard. It's multiplayer in the campaign, but it, it, it was it was fun. It was a refreshing experience to go back to it. There were some frustrating parts because. Well, eh. And I have a lot. I have a very fond memories, especially of Call of Duty World at War, because it was basically what Brian and I became friends on, and it's how oh. Brian met Tyler, and then. This is true. Uh, I and just, welcome back, Mo. <laughs> it it's just I have so many fond memories of World of War, and we tried to go back and play it not long ago, and it's unfortunate that it has been take over by, taken over by hackers and assholes. So, yeah, the old Call of Duty games never. You don't go back to old Call of Duty games. It, you can't go home. <laughs> we don't go just, to Raven home. Yeah, <laughs> um, which is too bad because, in my opinion, as far as gunplay and yeah, it was one of the better ones. The original Modern Warfare and World at War were the two best Call of Duties, in my opinion. I miss Upskirts. And it slowly went downhill from there. Yeah, I miss Upskirts. I mean, there were... <laughs> it, these, the uh, outskirts. Outskirts, and, outskirts and Upheaval or whatever. We, <laughs> yeah, that was we it. We combined them together and called them Upskirts. The, that was my favorite thing. My most, one favorite. of my... F- outskirts was my absolutely my favorite map. And my favorite thing in the world was, uh, as you started off, if you were on, I think it was the German side... Uh, yeah. there was a house to the right of you, and my favorite thing to do was to go up into that house and just camp the living hell out of it, and I know I'll get so many... Yeah, you get a perfect hate. vantage point yeah. on the church tower. Yeah, right exactly, too. and you know what? The funny thing is, I didn't camp there and just pick off people. I camped there, and I would... Literally, there was a house across the map <clears throat> that you could see and have a good vantage point of. That is all I did. I camped, and I just killed people in the in the house across the map. That map was so much fun. Oh my god, it was so much fun. I miss that game. Treyarch has level design down to a science. They yeah. work well for small things like they do. Well, and the annoying the, the annoying thing about COD... I don't think so, anyway. No, they yeah. They balance I, it too much now. Yeah, yeah, they balance it too much. And I was just getting ready to say that. That's the annoying thing about COD is they're trying to get into e... What's it e-sport. called? Esports. And I'm sorry. I know that a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this, but I can think of nothing more boring than sitting there and watching somebody for hours on end play a video game. But see, that's the funny thing. A lot of people do enjoy it. Just, yeah, I, 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 I well, personally... and you look at Let's Plays, and it for some reason those don't bore me. I like Let's Plays, but just the thought of listening to like an NFL style broadcast of someone playing a game just sounds goofy and boring to me. Yeah, um, but I mean, it's I'm I'm the same way with actual sports. I don't find sports that interesting. Yeah, I'm the only I'm the only sports guy here. So I like the Olympics. <laughs> that, do, that doesn't count. That is the Brian input. Thank you. Um, <laughs> But I feel the same way about actual sports that I do with esports. I mean, if if you're going to watch it, why don't you just play it? I mean, I know there's the appeal of there's these people that are just ungodly good and they train all their lives and mm-hmm. years on end doing these things and they've just perfected it or whatever. However they want to describe it. I don't find that interesting. I find the interesting thing is playing it. Let's Plays are interesting because there's the commentary, there's the humor, there's the things that happen, there's people's experiences. Like but, your Let's Plays. Yeah, like my Let's Plays. But I mean, my Let's Plays aren't... Plug! Plug. Yes, plug! <laughs> um... But with esports, it's it's not about the experiences; it's about the scoreboard, and that isn't the heart of gaming, in my opinion. What else have I played? I've also been playing Animal Crossing: New Leaf. It is a guilty pleasure of mine. I had to say his name. And the mojo has now moved back on the Jackson's lap. He's had ah, and licking that elbow. Um, he, that was a hand, not an elbow. Animal Crossing is this nice little thing that you do just like an hour a day to do Oh my daily god, stuff Animal from... Crossing. Don't get me started on Animal Crossing. That game is you as get, addicting as Euro Truck Simulator. You get addicted to it. It's, it's The awesome. only reason I'm not still playing it is because I had to send it back to Gamefly. And of course, there's the new Pokemon games I've been playing 
almost I, the hell out of that. I want to play those I'm, so much. I'm not as far into why as I thought I'd be at this point. Why? Ooh. I will smack you. <laughs> you punny bastard. <laughs> I don't think I've been playing much else. Yeah, you finally got a 3DS. Oh, no. No, no, no. I've also been playing Warframe. That is one of the best free-to-play games out right yeah, now. Yeah, it is a phenomenal free-to-play game that I don't play much. It is. But it, it's it, really good. There's a lot it, of complexity. There's a lot of depth. But it's also very simple. Somewhat pl- somewhat of a plug. It's going to be on PlayStation 4, folks. I don't think it's going to be there on launch day, though. No, but it will still be free. Yes. Free-to-play. It has microtransactions, but they're good. They're fair. And the awesome thing is you don't have to have PlayStation Plus to play it. Yeah, games. it's not like Microsoft. Pay money to us so you can play free-to-play games. That shouldn't... Yeah, anyway. So, that's all you've been playing? Pretty much right? it. Okay, so I would like to take this moment then to segue into our next little segment and point out something that Brian has yet to notice. What? The one thing on the table that does not belong. Pizza? ta you have Killzone for the PS4 already. Yes, I do. I just went and picked it up at Best Buy this morning. Yeah. It's the, a very unique thing in a console generation where the games will come out first and it's just... There's no console to play it on. on. Yeah, there's no console to play it on, so they don't really care about mm. breaking release dates. I don't think that's the it issue here. But, well, I mean, they literally, they didn't break the release date. Yeah, it's, it doesn't matter because there's no console yeah, to play it on. Yeah, and they had to have been they had to have been authorized by the publisher to do it anyway. Oh, yeah. But, um, I mean, even things like Gamefly have sent out their PS4 games. Which surprised me to hear that. Yeah. But, I mean, why not? It's not like your people are going to get to play it early unless they have a debug kit. Yeah. Which, I don't think PlayStation 4 has debug kits. I think they're all... Well, there's dev kits. Yeah. Yeah, dev kits. That's what I was thinking of, not debug kits. But I don't know why you want to... Like, so if you have a dev kit, you already have the game, probably. Devs yeah. can chill out and play each other's games. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. But, yeah, Killzone Shadowfall. Uh, this was the... Is this the only... Yeah, I think this was the only PlayStation 4 launch game that I pre-ordered just because I like shooters. Um, And, oh my gosh, it looks... Ah, excuse me. <coughs> my allergies have been bothering me. Um, It looks so freaking beautiful. And the thing is, <coughs> I look at Killzone Shadowfall and I think, you know, launch games usually don't look that good. This scares the hell out of me. <laughs> So we're we're gonna talk now. Uh, this is our main topic of the week, and we're gonna talk about the PlayStation Four and next gen, uh, because you know why not? Everybody else is. Yeah, it's coming up. It's right around the corner. We have a game here on the table. Let's let's talk about My it. My God, can you believe that it? PlayStation Four is coming out in as yeah. of today, exactly uh, wanna, one week. Want to interject real quick? So PlayStation Four is coming out. I still can't believe that it's only a week away. And it's midnight, so it is literally only a week away. I I was so, so excited whenever they announced the PlayStation 4. And the funny thing was, I wasn't... Going into the PlayStation 4 announcement, I was not excited at all. Because <laughs> I was like a PlayStation. Because PlayStation 3, it's a good console. It sold well. Um, it has a lot, a lot, a lot of flaws that I think... That I feel that the Xbox does not have. Now, the Xbox has its own flaws, don't get me wrong. The circus that was the announcement of these at E3, it made me laugh so hard. Oh, because yeah. of This E3? This last E3 when, okay. when they were announced. Um, it was so hysterical, all the, the banter back and forth about how they were going to be so different mm-hmm. and how one was going to be so much superior. <clears throat> and the first one was shown. Which one was first again? Uh, PlayStation uh at E3? Yeah, at E3. When when they, Xbox One. When they were released, what yeah. they looked like. Microsoft. When the Xbox Microsoft. One was shown. The Xbox One was shown, it was nice, and it was sleek, and it was a box. And it was like, okay, that's a, yeah, that's and a every, Xbox. Everybody and then, hated it. Yes, everyone hated it, and everyone was like, the PS4 is going to be so much better. Look at the PS3, it was so sleek, it was so nice. And which, then, it, which, may I then, interject for a moment that the PlayStation 3, especially the original one, was not that nice. In fact, it was quite large. Yes, it, it, was, a, it was a huge box. Um, and then... Right up next, the PS4, and it was the same thing with a blue line and in italics. Yeah, that that was that cracked me up. I I I relayed that to Tyler. Someone had tweeted out that it's the Xbox One but in italics, and that just I just died laughing. It that was so funny. Yeah, we were we were talking to each other during the thing, right? Yeah, we were we were on Skype or something. We were on Skype, yeah. And I was I was just um I was laughing my ass off when. 
the PS4 was released, I was just laughing, and the only words I could utter out of my mouth, it's the Xbox slanted. And, and they were so similar. You know it's what? And Xbox. this was this was before uh, PlayStation had come out, and uh, this was before anyone was being really, really clear about Always On restrictions. And I said a long, long time ago, whenever they started hinting that, that the next-gen boxes might have... Uh, always online requirements i will not buy an always online box and i know everyone's like well you're online anyway while i travel you know and i have an rv and i travel and i like to take my game systems with me and i don't have internet you know so there are just times whenever i need to be offline so that's my little rant about that whenever the playstation whenever sony came out and had their drop the mic moment at their press conference and they said we are not doing always online requirements. I could not stop laughing. And the funny thing, here, here's what I found interesting about that. Sony, when they did their, I believe it was at the reveal in February, when they did their reveal, they said, we're not going to require always on, we're not going to require an, an internet connection for the, for the PlayStation 4. But then Microsoft came out and did their, or excuse me, no, Microsoft didn't come out and do their announcement. Then there were a lot of rumors swirling around that Microsoft wouldn't technically have an always-on requirement, but it would charge fees for used games. And let me go on the record by saying that I'm not a supporter of used games. I don't, I don't think that it's right to deny someone who has worked hard on a game their profits. But I do support game rentals. And to ban used games would cause such a huge issue with game rentals. And that's where I drew the line. Um, so yeah, uh, I was so, so happy to see the PlayStation 4 was not going to be doing an always online. And then, of course, Xbox came out. And I, I texted Tyler. I was so excited when Microsoft made that announcement. And uh, so thrilled that they did. So I'm very, very, very excited for both of these consoles. And I, I'll be buying both. Uh, launch day. Uh, we're only a week away. From PlayStation 4, we're only a week away, or excuse me, we're two weeks away from the Xbox One. Yeah. I can't, What? how are you, how are you feeling about it? Because I just, it's hard, <laughs> I can't talk about it, I can't articulate things tonight while me? I try to pull up the... As for me, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm actually a bit more mellow about it. I, uh, it's been a long time coming, it, the previous generation lasted a little bit too long in my opinion. Oh, way too as long. As much as they touted how long the system's lifespans were and how they originally <clears throat> were planned to be so long. I, it's bullshit. Um, it's it's a breath of fresh air, and it's a bit too long coming for me to be super excited about it. But I am I am expectant of the games. I'm very excited for the possibility that people when or the dev the dev teams that they're making their games aren't lowering themselves to putting something on console and PC. And things will have a higher baseline, basically. But let's be realistic. Uh, yes, right now, these consoles are as powerful as probably high-end PCs, but in about a year, they're not going to be. Oh, no. But the, the thing is, with <clears throat> games in general that go PC and console, they have a baseline. <clears throat> they have to be able to run on console, but they can't be vastly different, so the engines are limited. Like, you can run something that's a PC-exclusive and it will look infinitely better than something that is Xbox 360 or PS3 exclusive, mm -hmm. hands down. That's why the old adage of if it can run Crisis, it can run anything. Mm -hmm. That doesn't. That's not relevant anymore. But the same thing applies. Mm -hmm. It's it's such a vast difference because the original Crisis could not run on the systems at the time. The original and, Crisis. Uh, whenever I got my my uh, desktop. Not long ago, that could run Crisis, and I was blown away by that. Of course, <laughs> by then Crisis was three or four years old. But yeah, Crisis the the Crisis two point engine or whatever engine they updated mm -hmm. that would work on the consoles. They, I'm pretty sure they had to rework the whole framework. Oh, I'm sure they did because it, it took them forever to actually do it. Yeah, the difference between Crisis one and two was that was a long time. And it took them a long time, even after Crisis two came out on Xbox three sixty and PS three. It took them a long time to put the original Crisis out there, and it's an XBLA game. But oh yeah. It's um, I'm just glad that things will have a higher baseline to work off of now. Yeah, things will look so much better. Things will, <coughs> like um, with Dead Rising three, we've mm -hmm. we we have some things to talk about that later in the show, but it um, 
one of the things it touted was all the different animations that can be stored now with all the new RAM that's in these consoles. Mm-hmm. And less than a gig of RAM in the Xbox 360, folks. Now it has eight and can use what four? <laughs> yeah. Granted, they they defend that with it didn't it doesn't need as much as a PC does because a PC runs the OS and all these other background processes and the host well, processes except for and... except for the fact that the Xbox is running three OSs. Yeah, so, yeah. Now I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll is get it into the that one later. or the 360 that runs the multiple OSs. The one. Oh, but it's um. But it, that's why it has more, because it needs more now. Mm-hmm. But before, that's what they touted. They were like, oh, I see what you're oh it I'm only sorry. needs, what was it, two gigs? Or, no, you said less than one No, gig. it was like 500-something gig. Yeah. Uh, gig. That'd be nice. <laughs> it only needed the 500 megabytes, because all, that's all the games actually need. They, they don't need much. It's the OS and the whole computer that needs the RAM and blah, 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 blah. Whatever. But games suffered for it. Games suffered for it. Well, but I mean, they didn't suffer for it initially. I would think because games on the console was not the game on console. Game I on can't console. talk. Games on consoles that were not podcast name. Game on console. No. No. Nah. Anyway, uh, games on consoles were not that RAM heavy, uh, hungry, but now they are. Yeah. I mean, and may I step back for a moment and say it blows me away to see what Rockstar has done with GTA Five on oh, current yeah. gen consoles. Holy crap, that they can milk that much out of current-gen consoles is nothing short of astonishing. Without loading screens. Without loading screens. And granted, there are some things, you know, there are people nitpick and bitch about the small things like, oh, grass just looks flat and blah, blah, blah. Look at all the other shit that's going on around you in that city. I don't care about the grass, and I'm a graphical whore, too. So, you know, I'm the guy, I'm the guy that will bitch about that. I do not care. That game is a uh, technical the, marvel. It is the... One of the be- hands down best looking games of this generation. Absolutely, and it is such a good send off to this generation. It is what a what it, a great it, way to send this. It is what will keep you going back to your 360 and PS3 until it comes out on PS4. Yeah, well, assuming it comes out, assuming. everyone assumes that it will come out on PS4. And let's be realistic, Rockstar, you're printing money if you release it on next gen consoles. Yeah, I mean, I already have the game, and I might buy it again on PS4. Oh yeah, I will too. Absolutely. You'll, you'll, proud, you'll just under double your sales if you re-release it on yeah. the next-gen system. I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. So, hey, next-gen's here. Yeah. <laughs> so excited. Um, Do you want to say anything about next-gen? I'm kind of falling asleep in all honesty. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can make Brian go away now. Yeah, Brian's out. All right. I'm going to take a nap. Go ahead, and say your, go ahead and say your goodbyes, Brian. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> 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 See you guys later. If we make another one, which hopefully we will. Oh, I'm sure we will. Um, I've got to get planning. <laughs> we're going to do the games. Well, you guys going to do the GameStop F- Expo tonight, or are you going to save it for a future podcast? This I week think we need so to long? do it. I yeah, think we, we should do it tonight. I uh, hate I hate to do it because we have gone really, really long. I think but... you guys know most of my observations that I made. So. Yeah. yeah. That and you left halfway through, so there was a lot of things that we saw. Yeah. 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 So. so. All right. I'm leaving halfway through again. All right. I'm going to move over to this side so I'm not so loud. <laughs> All right. Okay, um, so I just want to take a moment here to talk about or run through some of the PlayStation 4 launch day games. So, the game that everyone is just so, so excited for on the PlayStation 4, Angry Birds Star Wars will be there day one. Oh my god. Can you believe it? Are you serious? You know how much it's going to be? That was, a, that, was a, Pro- that was a sneak in. Probably 40 whole dollars like it is on the Xbox 40 360. 40 whole dollars, that is so cheap. When it's $2 on the, on the iPhone. What a sale. What a sale. Okay, All now, that graphic fidelity on the PS4. Yeah. It's going to be running at it's, such a high, much it's higher. Be, it's going to be a such a better game now. Realistically, I don't know how much it's going to be on PlayStation 4, but I think it, there was an Angry Birds game that released not long ago on consoles, and it was stupidly priced. <laughs> is, it the, is it the Star Wars or is it the Star Wars 2? Because I've heard of Star Wars 2, Angry Birds. What I've got here says just Angry Birds Star Wars. Oh. Wow. Uh, do they even have Star uh, Two done? Why are we talking it... about Angry Birds? Uh, why did uh, <coughs> I thought I saw it in the App Store at one point? I could be mistaken. I could have been dreaming. It could have been root beer. <laughs> I drink root beer. Root yeah. beer good. Now the, uh, the pizza t- coma. I thought of it in a pizza coma. The three games that we talked about earlier, of course, are going to be launch titles: Assassin's Creed Four, Black Flag, uh, Battlefield Four, and Call of Duty Ghosts. Of course. No, well, yeah, that'd be dumb to not put Call of Duty Ghosts on. on They're already out now. Why wouldn't they be yeah, lost titles? Yeah, exactly. 
Um, I think just <clears> like <throat> our Killzone Shadowfall copy we have here, I think you can go ahead and pick those up now. Yeah, I, there's a lot of, of, of the next-gen games. I think some of the Xbox One games are out there, too. I'm not so sure about that. That's still, that's like a week after the PS4, right? It seems like I've seen some... Maybe I'm thinking of PlayStation 4 games. Uh, my brain my brain died. Anyway, I need to go pick up my copies. Cause yeah, you do, because you don't... I don't think I can pre-order anymore. Uh, I bet you can. I might. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll check that out. Uh, on that next time on, yeah. uh, on our podcast. Yeah, because the next one's going to be post-launch, people. Yeah, post-launch. We'll have our reactions, our opinions. Our... It'll probably be post-launch after, because we're going to do it We're gonna do it once every two weeks now. Yeah, this podcast will probably be a once every two weeks thing. It might be stretched to once a month. But It depends if, on listener. Yeah, you we know, get a how lot many... of feedback. If we got to get a lot of listeners, then we'll try to do this as often as we can. Yeah, absolutely. And as long as you guys are interested... Yeah, but we have fun doing this. This this has been fun so far for our first go. Mm-hmm. Um, and why are really we long. acting like we're wrapping this up? This isn't the end of the Yeah, stages. exactly. Anyway, uh, anyway continue. Uh, continue. Blacklist Retribution. Now, you and I both have played that. It's a free-to-play game on PC. I played that in alpha. That game is so much fun. That is Call of Duty-style gameplay with a super sci-fi twist in a unique world with some of the most intricate gun customization ever. With a very interesting free play system, you can rent the parts for guns for a certain amount of days if you like it. You can buy it permanently with the in-game currency that you get for just playing. It's ex- it's extensively expensive. You don't get much per game, but you can also buy the credits, and it's fairly cheap for the parts yeah, and, to buy them permanently. And the other thing is, you know, the there are people out there that, and I don't mean this is enough against people, but there are people out there that literally have no life. This is something that they would spend their entire day of yes. every single day of their week doing. This game is so much fun. It is, it. I haven't. T- I honestly haven't played it since. Uh, yeah, we haven't played it in a while. I played it after it got its full release on Steam. I didn't do too much of it because there were so many other things coming out at the time. I'm going to revisit it once it's on PS4. Yeah, so will I. And I've there have been a lot of additions to it, but it's it's really interesting because you're thinking, oh, you can keep renting all these parts, but there's hundreds of parts and how am i supposed to know when the rentals run out and things it's actually very simple it will prompt you when those run out to re-rent them for the same prices or sometimes cheaper prices if there's a sale going on you can and it re, you you can choose at that point whether you want to buy it permanently another seven day rental another one day rental i think there's even a one hour rental yeah for some i things. think there is and it's por- it, it, a little side note here it's important to note that everything that we're saying with regards to this game right now is based on the PC version. We don't know what the PlayStation 4 version is oh, yeah. going to, how it's going to run. We'll I can, we, can as, general. we can assume that it will run similar to it, though. Yes. Um, there's a lot of levels. The levels keep coming out. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're supporting the game. It is a really, really... If you like shooters, I highly recommend this game. And it's... It is worth a $3. Try. $3. <laughs> is zero money. Um, I would like the dollars in your wallet, all three of them are going into that game. And I would like to point out that I think I heard somewhere that they're not sure that they're going to hit launch day for PlayStation 4 with Blacklight Retribution, but it is on this list, so that's why I said it. I think a lot of the free-to-play games are kind of iffy about when they're actually going to be. I know War Thunder is kind of iffy, which is unfortunate, which is unfortunate because I was so looking forward to that game, but we'll we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to breeze through a few of these. Uh, Contrast by Compulsion Games is going to be a PSN game. What's Contrast? I don't know anything about it. <laughs> well, it's coming out, people. Yeah, it's coming out. Uh, we have done our homework. Contrast. I, I want to say that that's part of... Is that one of the indie games they're doing? I think so. I, hey, if you guys know about it, more power to you. If you want to in, inform us about it, please feel free to, because we, we like games. We like video games. We, we like knowing like about them. Please um, inform us. We're here to inform you, but please inform us as well. DC Universe Online, uh, which is not surprising, because it's that's, Sony Online Entertainment. still alive. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's bit, that's fairly decent game, a fairly big game nowadays. Oh, I thought uh, that died with City of Heroes. Mm-mm. Well, nope. Interesting. Dive Kick, FIFA 14, Flower, which will be a cross buy game, uh, Injustice Gods Among Us Ultimate Edition. Ooh, I need to play that game. That's the uh, DC Universe fighting game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, think I need so. to play that. That that's gotten stellar reviews. Yeah, it's gotten really good reviews, and and uh, yeah, I'd like to, I, I'll have to try it at some point too. Yeah. Uh, Just Dance 2014. Some people care. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's another one of those kind of all the same kind of things. It's another iteration. It's an iterative title. Yeah. Um, of course, Killzone, uh, Killzone Shadowfall, which we have right here. Yay! I'm going to keep saying that because I'm so happy to have it. Although, at the same time, I'm really, really sad because I don't have anything to play it on. It's very tempting. 
There's well, there's no point in opening it. Ram it in your PS3, maybe it'll work. <laughs> I don't want to break my PS3. Are you sure you'll break PS3? Might break the desk. Might break both. Bonfire. Sixty whole dollar down the drain. Yeah. <clears throat> Knack. Everyone makes fun of Knack. Knack is a bit silly. You know what? We it's played not bad. We played it. At, we, we played, played it at, at the, the GameStop Expo, and it was the first thing we got our hands on. Actually. Yeah, because okay, so we walk into the GameStop Expo. This is the GameStop Expo that they held in August in Las Vegas. At the beautiful, what the hell hotel was it? Treasure Island, wasn't it? No, that's where we were staying. The Venetian. It was at the Venetian. Yeah, it was at the, their, the Venetian Expo at their, something. The Sands, Sands Convention Sands, Center. The Sands Convention Center. Um, that, was, that was a really fun moment. I'd do that. That was again. really fun. But uh, anyway, so we walk into the convention center and directly to our right is the PlayStation booth. I'm like, that's where we're going first. So we went over there. Uh, they had Warframe running. They had Warframe running. They had they had Knack, they had and Knack. then they had something else. Uh, a contrast, actually, I think was running. I think they were running Contrast. I think they were. They were also running Beyond Two Souls before it came out on the PS3s. Yeah. Some place. They had. I want to say something else. I don't yeah. know what. There was more. Oh, they there had, was there was a lot of PlayStation. There was a lot of PlayStation booth, but PlayStation oh, Four specifically. They had a bunch of their indie games playing too. Yeah, they had Octodad. They had a uh, Flower running on the Vita. Mo, don't sniff that. <laughs> Please don't lick my mic. No. No. Um, they had Flower running on the Vita. They had uh, Puppeteer. Puppeteer, that was it. That was yeah. weird looking. That was an odd looking game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was the first thing we, we made a beeline for. And I've been really interested in Knack because it's uh, it, it's being developed by Mark Cerny, who did Crash Bandicoot, which is one of my all-time favorite PlayStation games. Um, so I've been keeping an eye on Knack, and from what I played, I think it's getting judged a little unfairly. The game is actually really hard. Um, the, it's not like, you it's, know... To me, it was hard because it was overly simple. It felt like there were more things you should have been able to do. I agree with that. In order to deal with some of the situations it presented. And the other thing that it, that I, the other issue that I had with it that felt like it made it hard was the save points were not good. No, the save points were not forgiving but this was a demo yeah so it was probably meant to be like that yeah because the demo skipped around the whole game so. oh yeah but the graphics were gorgeous they were for what it was it was a very gorgeous game and mm -hmm. the interesting thing about it was your character is made up of different little blocks that mm -hmm. are particles and they're all individual little things and they swirl around when you get hit they get knocked off you they get regained when you absorb shit they get put on fire if you're made out of wood it's very it's a very interesting tech demo to me, mm -hmm. in if terms you, of what it could do. I felt like if you enjoyed Crash Bandicoot, you'd probably enjoy Knack. Yeah. Um, which I I've, I've loved the first Crash Bandicoot game. Played the second one, never played another one after that because they went downhill from there. But, um, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to Knack. That's on my uh, launch rental list. Yeah, if you like Crash Bandicoot, it's definitely the type of game you should look out for. But if you're more of a uh, Ratchet and Clank or Jack and Daxter. or Jack and Daxter type person, it might be a little too simple for you. Yeah, people, I agree. People with that. are calling it a kids game. It's not. It, really it's not a exactly game. a kids game. It's not mature. There's not blood and gore and all that stuff. But it's it's simple. It's, it's simple, simple but it's hardcore. It's simple at the same hard. time. Yeah, I think um, it's safe to say that. Uh, so we've also got Lego Marvel Super Heroes, Madden NFL 25, which I'm personally excited about, NBA 2K14, NBA Live 14. Need for uh, <clears throat> excuse Need me. Need for Speed Rivals. Sorry, my voice keeps cutting out. Need for Speed Rivals. Playroom. Playroom. That doesn't that come with the that, eye device? No, it comes on every single PlayStation Four preloaded. You have to have the eye device to use it. Though. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, although I've heard that there are a few things that you don't need the eye for on it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know what they are, but that's what I've heard. Um, we saw <clears throat> a demonstration of this at the expo as well. It's really. What it is, is it's just a little tech demo for the iDevice, but it also just looks charming and fun. I yeah. don't know why it looks why it looks fun, but because it literally is just a tech demo. But It's a tech demo for both the iDevice and the integrated move system into the controllers themselves, because the, the, Forgon is the phallic move controller yeah. with the waving a light orb. It's with, like you're waving a giant glowing dildo in the air. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. It's a dildo. Yeah. It's a dildo with buttons. And the same <laughs> kind of... dildo with buttons. Well, some of them... Anyway. Um, yeah, please. The, uh, 
So Not the same the same kind of lights and stuff that are on the orb of the Move controller are on the back of the PlayStation 4 controllers, and it's and the, let's let's the be realistic. The playroom it's... takes advantage of that, and you can there are these little Robots. robot things That's that one you of shoot the out of them, games. and you can suck them back up, and you can see them inside your controller, and they move around with the physics, and you see basically inside the controller <clears> as you're moving it, you can even press the buttons, <coughs> and they depress as you depress them on your actual controller. And it, and it's it it just looks really charming and really 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 cute, but uh, not worth sixty dollars, unfortunately. Yeah, is it is the iToy thing that sixty dollars? Ooh, yeah. Um, peripherals, man, peripherals. Well, and again, this has been stated so many times. They're just le- hanging that thing out to die, <laughs> the it, way Move did. It's uh, it's a sad thing because the Xbox One comes with Connect. Yeah, and well, that that is a plus for the Xbox One with a competitor for with its with it with the PS4 having a competitive device that has to be sold separately. It it, it is. does kind of hurt the PS4 in a way, and I think I it also hurts innovation too. It does hurt innovation just a little bit because it's with the Connect, everyone will have one now, and so everyone can develop for it, even if it's in the smallest ways like voice commands mm-hmm. or recognizing who's playing. Yeah, just like uh, I read today on Larry Herb's, uh, that's Major Nelson's, uh, he tweeted out saying that basically uh, some of the Kinect integration in Battlefield 4 is that you'll be able to uh, call out now for a medic. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds really interesting. Yeah. It would uh, be it, nice if the PlayStation 4 could also take advantage of that. Yeah, but unfortunately way. without it boxed in, I mean, I understand that Sony kind of kicked the camera to the curb in order to hit the price point that they were looking for, but I think in the long run it could probably hurt them. Yeah. Because, say what you will about motion gaming, say what you will about the Kinect, the Kinect is an impressive device. And it has been since since its debut. Uh, Kinect 1 had, of course, way too many technical limitations, but it was still an impressive device. Kinect 2 looks to be such an improvement. Yes, it has so many more detail-specific cameras and mm-hmm. things. It can sense the... It can sense the heartbeat, right? It can sense heartbeat. It can, if you take off your jacket, if you're wearing a jacket and you take it off, it can detect that, okay, that's a jacket. I know that's not a living thing. Yeah. You it, know? it can easily <clears throat> figure out who you are, what you are, where you go, which controller you're holding. Amusingly, it can't d- detect facial hair yet, though. It can't detect facial hair? Mm-mm. Does it have the same issue with skin color as the first one? Do we know I that would, yet? I don't think anybody has explored this, although I met... Okay, nobody that I listen to has explored this. Um, I'm sure it's been explored somewhere, and I'm sure that Microsoft is well aware of those complaints. <laughs> um, so, but we'll ha- we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. That that's coming up after the PlayStation Four. So back onto uh, back onto our launch games after Playroom. There's Resogun, which has been very hyped up by IGN. Um, Resogun, what is that? It's a six. Basically, it's like a successor to Super Stardust Delta, which you won't know about because you don't have a Vita. Um, is that? <laughs> Exactly. Ah, oh, God, how do I describe it? It's like a 2D side-scrolling game. Like a 2D a, shooter kind of thing? Yeah, kind of oh, yeah. kind of like that. Uh, oh, God, I don't know how to describe it. Spaceships, shooting. It's kind of like asteroids, kind of, maybe. I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this. I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't appeal to me too much, so I haven't been following it. Uh, it's it's going to be free with... It's like Play- a throwback to old arcade games kind yeah. of thing. Okay. It's going to be free with PlayStation Plus when it launches. So. That's always good. Uh, check it out. Just one more reason to get PlayStation Plus, especially now that you need to have it to yeah, play multiplayer. You need to online. have it to play multiplayer, and let me tell you something right now: PlayStation Plus is an amazing deal. It really is. It is. It's cheaper than an Xbox Live Gold subscription. Right now, it's cheaper than an Xbox Live Gold subscription. And I was pointing this out to Brian earlier. Um, one of the reasons that it's cheaper than an Xbox Live Gold subscription right now is because it did not include multiplayer. <laughs> you oh, did not have so to have it. it so it might. So I predict it might go up. Hmm. To be competitive. That'd be a pretty big blow to them. To their publicity anyway. I don't know about that. Because I think gamers would understand it. They wouldn't like it. But I think they'd understand it. Just like, I mean, during their E3 press conference. When they casually slipped in that it was required now for multiplayer. No one cared. Yeah. And you were you were telling me earlier that apparently Japan just got the news. Did they? Yeah, you said earlier that um Japan didn't realize that the... Oh, 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 was... yeah. Yeah, uh, there was a Japanese, uh, I don't think I favorited it on my tweets, but yeah, there was a Japanese art, uh, news outlet that reported saying, 
acting like it was the first they'd ever heard of his PlayStation Floor. Uh, floor. PlayStation Floor. PlayStation Floor. It's a new PlayStation product. PlayStation 4 requires PlayStation Plus in order to, to access multiplayer. And we're all like, dudes, we've known this for like six months. Where have you been? They're a little behind the times. A little behind the times, which is unusual for Japan. Yeah. Considering, usually yeah. Usually they know everything. Well, technology-wise. Yes. No offense, Japan. No offense, Japan. We're, we're merely talking about your geeks and nerds. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. I stopped at Resogun. Skylander Swap Force, if you're into that. Sound Shapes, which will be a cross-buy. Super Motherload. Trying to the complete story. I'm interested in that one. Oh, so is, by the complete story, is that the first game with it? I don't think so. I think it's like the DLC. Okay. Trying, sure. trying has been a very interesting thing. I've, I've wished I'd tried it. It seems very interesting, and I'm, I, I might pick it up. I tried the demo of trying to, and I loved it, but I didn't want to buy it. <laughs> well, every, every money was tight. Okay, I'll put it that way. Money was tight. Every time I've seen it, it looks very floaty, and I'm not too big a fan on floaty platformers. Mm-hmm. And it's not exactly a platformer. Well, it's not really a platformer. It's, it's a, more of a puzzler. Yeah, it's a side-scrolling puzzle platformer. It is a lot. Beat 'em up kind of thing. You really should try, if you've not tried the Xbox Live it's, arcade demo. You really should try it. It's a lot of fun. It definitely deserves <clears> the credit it's given by everyone. And it's a gorgeous game. Oh, yeah. It really is. It's a beautiful it, game. The first one was even beautiful. It was probably one of the prettiest games of all time at that moment. Because, I, for an indie game, I should say. I, mm-hmm. I should point that out. For an indie game, it was definitely a very, very gorgeous game. And I think it's easy to credit that to the type of game it was. Mm-hmm. I think side-scrolling is easy to do that with. And yeah. they did it flawlessly. The lighting... Oh my god, the lighting in that game. The lighting in the game, the water physics. The water physics, The water yes. physics are amazing. Uh, they go into the puzzles a lot. Oh yeah. You affect I, them with I, objects. I, I love that game to death and I don't even own it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'll pro- I might I might pick that up. It just depends on funds. Uh, and the last game on the list is Warframe, which we already, we already kind of touched on that. So uh, yeah, another free-to-play game. <laughs> another free-to-play game. <laughs> I very highly recommend that game. It's a lot of fun, and it's incredibly addicting. It's a co-op. Is it co-op? Player? It's it's not exactly co-op only anymore. It has some optional PvP. Some oh, I didn't know that. System. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's very clan-oriented because there's some guns you can only get by researching in a clan dojo, which is this giant pooled resource thing that every member of your clan will put into, and you all get rewards from it. But it's not necessary. You don't need these guns. They're not overly powerful. They're just different. All the guns pretty much play different. They all have their own unique play style, their own perks, and the plethora of mods you get to put into them just change them so much. It is a very, very well done, free-to-play, co-op-centric and, game. And once again, free dollars. Free dollars. Zero dollars. Yes. And does not have pay-to-win? Um, Since it's co-op, it's hard to say pay-to-win is even a thing. Yeah, that's a good because, point. Because uh, power pay is... Empowerment is fun. Is fun. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things that makes Call of Duty so popular because people love the kill streaks and all that stuff because it's OP. It is excessive, it is over the top, and it is unbalancing. And with a co op game, you don't have to worry about that too much. But I do have to say, if you are trying to level up a new Warframe, which is basically like a character mm-hmm. with abilities and things Tenno. A, a Tenno, yes. Yeah. When you're trying to level mm-hmm. one of them up and you, you're open and online with people playing that are just trying to run it through to get resources or blueprints. It, it can be a little grindy, I will say. But when you're doing that and you, you're basically just running alongside them because you're running with equipment that isn't as good and you can't get the kills like they can with their instant shot, super high level weapons. When you're trying to run through these low level things, it's definitely a game you want to play with your friends. The online community is nice. They're, I, they're, I haven't really run into trolls, anything like that. But well, and I think in a game like Warframe, it's kind of hard to troll. What would you do? Just stand in one place? Everyone can continue doing what you're what they're doing without you. So. Well, some of the missions are objective-based. You have to carry something, and someone wants to do things their way, like they just want to kill things, and they'll pick it up, and they'll just let things come at them. Mm. And you, you can troll, but it, it's not often, and it's easy to play by yourself. It's The best fun is with friends. You run around, you're a space ninja, you do wall runs, Crazy flips. Okay, air two kicks. words that really should have caught your attention right there. Space, space ninja. ninja. Space Ninja. How can you go wrong with Space Ninja? Ninjas in space. It, it's not just my interpretation of the game. They, they That's literally it. what they call it. They call you a Space Ninja. It, it's it's amazing. I love it. It's Absolutely. So, so try that fun. game, free to play. 
try it. Uh, that it's on is going, Steam. If you want it's to try on it now, Steam, and on that's PS4. going to be on PS4. Again, that's another one that they're not quite sure that they're going to hit launch day. But as, as of this recording, it's showing as a launch day title. Um, so yeah, we're excited for next gen. Do we have any predictions? Uh, predictions. I'm going to say there will be a story of someone being abducted by aliens because they were hacking through the connect. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. May I, may I go on the record and, and this is a little rant that I've had before. I'll, I'll try not to take too, too, too much time because we're probably up to like three hours. Oh no, we're, we're I think we're probably around two hours now. Yeah. Probably around two um, hours. Sorry. But I'm just going to take up just a little time and say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we live in a very digital age. We live in a very theoretically secure age where there are cameras everywhere, there are microphones everywhere. Even in places that you don't expect, privacy no longer exists. <laughs> and I'm sorry, if you think the Kinect is going to spy on you and turn itself on and all this stuff... It's not going to. You have to. a camera on your phone, people. <laughs> It's not going to do that. It's basically the same. And there's thing. there's a very very simple solution to this, and that is cover it up or unplug it. Oh, there's a there's actually a yeah, bundle or something. A, it comes a with a blinder. Yep, it comes with a blinder for your Connect. So I'm not trying to put anybody off. I'm not trying to insult anybody directly, but grow Give up. The times, man. Grow up, please. Give the times. Um. Okay. So uh, my my prediction for next gen is that. And this, I'm going to be called such a fanboy for this. Oh, God, here it goes. Yeah, well, I think that the Xbox One will outsell the PlayStation 4. Not by much, but I think it will overall outsell the PlayStation 4. I actually think the opposite. I think E3 absolutely crushed Xbox One. Even now, <clears throat> even with Xbox One's massive backpedaling after that fiasco, yeah. now, I, 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 I think it hurt them enough where people are just deciding yeah. to switch. Especially... Especially after getting myself hands on with the controller. And oh things god, like that. the controller! And we'll oh, talk about that in a we'll minute. We'll talk about but, that in a minute. But um, uh, I'm, like I'm talking like down the road. I know right off the bat, PS4 is probably going to outsell Xbox One. But I'm talking say ten years down the road. I think that eventually Xbox One will come out on top. And again, not that by is much. True. That is true. I think with the hardcore fans, the PS4 is one. Mm -hmm. But I think Xbox has successfully touted itself as a casual system, it, more so than a hardcore system, especially mm -hmm. by putting Connect. In every console box, and it's and this is this is a horse that's been beaten to death in a lot of podcasts that I listen to. So I apologize for rehashing this, but it's hard to get people off of, especially now that we're living in such an online community where we have had to choose sides. Um, it's hard to get people to switch. Uh, think about the people that you know that only play Call of Duty, that only play Madden, saying, "Hey, now I'm going to go over to the PlayStation Four. Are you going to join me? Are you really going to be able to convince them to go over to a new system?" And yeah. if they're only playing Madden or only playing Call of Duty, how are you going to convince them to spend $400 on the system? Yeah. Especially when the Xbox 360 and the PS3 are still going to be around for at least a couple more years. Yeah. They're still going to be supported. Oh, yeah. There will definitely still be games coming out for them, especially ones that are still coming out on PS4. For God's sakes, they didn't stop making PlayStation 2 games until, what, oh. seven years after the dang thing died? Yeah, that was... It, well, not seven gonna, years. It's, it's going to be a lot similar. Yeah. Especially since, Five years, probably. Especially since just before these new consoles were even officially announced, the, both companies <clears> stated <throat> that their, that their current gonna, systems yeah. were still in the prime of their lives, that they still had twice their lifespan to go. And it, it, it's a bit silly. Honestly, it's a bit silly that yeah. they said that, especially right before they come out with their new console designs mm -hmm. and things like that. And it's going to be a duality system where you've got the stubborn and the people who just can't get the new system, people stuck on the old stuff, mm -hmm. and dealing well, and, with basically hand-me-down software. Yeah, and I and I understand and absolutely appreciate people that don't have the money to afford the systems, because it is. Oh, it's yeah. pricey. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not for, a cheap for thing goodness sakes, and, and, and gaming is not a cheap hobby. <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. It's not. No. Um, but I want to say something on Console Wars before we kind of move on with this. Folks, it's video games. And I understand that you have a great deal of loyalty. You may, you may only be able to afford one console. That's not the end-all be-all. And nobody's dumb for picking one console over another. It's just one of those it's things. It's personal preference, people. It's personal preference. And Can't we can, all just can get we, along? Can we please just like video games? Can, can we just join in on, just join hands and sing Kumbaya around the fire? So That is filled with connects some... and iToys and, uh, well, and Vitas maybe not and, connects, but... and DS lights and... Just bonfire of the vanity. 
Uh, I'm getting my things yeah. mixed up. It's late, people. Yeah. It's yeah, late. It's one o'clock. We've been podcasting for a long time. Um, so, yeah. Uh, video games. Video please, games. please love video games. You don't have to hate each other just because you're on different consoles. They're video all games, amazing. Video games are a medium for people to get together. Video games are a medium for people to have fun and enjoy things. They are not a medium for hate. So, And they're a medium for people to get lost in stories, to get lost yeah, in, in a world. Whenever I stepped in, whenever I stepped into Rapture, I lost myself for the entire game. That game is so amazing, Bioshock. Um, and I'm still excited for the yeah. for the DLC, but that that's for a different podcast. I don't want to take up too much time with that. Yeah, we'll um, we'll get into the video games art argument like everyone else has at some point in the future. Yeah. If we might not, let us know if you want us to. Yeah. Um. So I have to ask before we move on, which one is for you? Ah. Ah. See if, let's see if you guys let's see if you guys can figure out what I did figure there. Figure it out. If you do, you win. Kudos. Yeah. Um which one do I think will win? Which one is for me? Honestly, after feeling both controllers at the expo, the PS4 is a little bit higher up because it felt like the PS4 controller and I'm gonna talk about the controller a lot because the controller is the conduit for gaming. Mm-hmm. It is or console gaming at least. It is it is what immerses you. It is what gets you in the game. It is what right. The box doesn't do anything but play the game. Yes, and for me, the controller is probably the most important thing. You can talk about the graphics cards all you want, but mm-hmm. if that controller feels like the PS3 controller, yeah, which I'm feels horrible. So sorry, but that PS3 controller, oh, it's bad. I it, mean, it really is. It is so bad. The PlayStation 3 controller. It's very interesting what happens with this gen, with this next gen, and I'm not sure if it was just because they're the show model controllers. I know the PS4 controller is out. You can buy it now. I'm not. I'm probably yeah, not going to buy weird. another one. May I, may I mention that that's weird it's, that you can so buy you can them now? you can use it on the PS3. But I've heard that of. that doesn't work very well. Yeah, and you can also use it on the PC, computer, yeah. which also does not work very well. Yeah, it's it's buggy. The drivers aren't out yet, and things like that. Um, but each one seems to have taken the other one's place. The triggers for the PS4 controller, they're not bad like the PS3 controllers were. Oh my God, the triggers. That they weren't still as good as the 360 controllers. Well, they went too far in. They did. They go too. They go a little too far in. It doesn't feel like you're. Uh, it doesn't it feels feel like, like you're, you're pressing into eternity whenever you push. Yeah, the it, there's a lot more give. And this into is the PlayStation the Three. Just yeah. to, just to reiterate, and with the PS4, it, it cuts it, so it feels it it feels a little short compared to things like the PS3 controller and the 360 controller, and it it does. It does feel good. I need more time on it. I didn't get a chance to play a, uh, a first-person shooter on it, so the triggers weren't exactly yeah, priority. which is unfortunate. Because... Which is the first thing I'll be doing as soon as I get my PS4. I'm going to be jamming a first-person shooter in it, and yeah, I will I'm, be lost for I, a while. I keep whispering in his ear, Shadowfall, because he hasn't pre-ordered I, I need, it yet. I need to get Shadowfall. I've, I played the first kill zone a long time ago. I kept doing, It looks so much better than I, the first I kept playing the multiplayer against bots. That game was brown. I'm yeah. sorry, that was that was the, the brownest game ever. You know what? And it it but, scared everybody whenever that bomb went off. Yeah, in, but, in but the Shadowfall, first one, but. Shadowfall is pretty. But I, I want to get back on the controllers because right. this is a big deal. And the the Xbox One controller, while the PS4 controller took a step up, the the PS4 controller its triggers are better. The analog stick isn't loose; it has resistance to it, which is very nice. Yeah. It's what you need with things like twitch shooters, because you need to know. And the concave... You can't only have two settings. You can't have still and all the way to the edge. You need to be able to only tilt it slightly and know exactly mm-hmm. how you're tilting just by feel. You can't always look. And you the can't con- slide around. And the concave uh, surfaces of the of the PlayStation 4's uh, uh, joysticks... Uh, such an improvement yes. over the mushroom things. I mean, the I never high. really had that much of an issue of my finger sliding off, like a lot of people have complained about, because... I have small hands, and uh, the, the the thumbsticks felt big enough for me, but man, the concave is really nice. It really is. And it gives your thumbs a nice resting point. It keeps you like on the on the thumbstick. Mm-hmm. It, it keeps you out of the side of the thumbstick, like the PS3 and PS2 controller. It, it, those controllers didn't want your thumbs on the sticks. They wanted them next to the sticks to press them in a direction. But keeping them centered gives you a lot more flexibility with where you want it to go mm-hmm. immediately. It, incru- it increases reaction speed, things like that all the time. But moving to the Xbox One controller, it seems to have taken a step back. The The triggers 
while they, they had, had this, no resistance. They didn't have as much resistance, and they stopped. They stopped. They too stopped soon. way too soon. They yeah. They didn't go deep like a trigger does. They don't curve like the old triggers did. As now well. the shape of the triggers didn't bother me that much. What bothered me was that was the lack of resistance because it was like pressing air. <laughs> yeah, and I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> Based on the feeling difference between these two, I'm pretty sure it was because they were a worn uh, show model of the controller. I'm pretty sure the Xbox One actual controller will be a lot more like the 360 controller. I hope so. I'm really hoping so, and if it's not, I will be heartbroken. The 360 controller is by far near perfect. They're, There's so little that they could do to make that controller yeah, better. It, it just feels so right. And <clears throat> I will be so sad if the Xbox One controller is bad. And I there's a lot that can make it bad. I wasn't totally... I didn't hate it as much as you and Brian did, but... Um, I, well, I shouldn't say hate. I didn't... I wasn't as unimpressed with it as you and Brian were, but I also was not as just blown away as I was with the PlayStation 4. Yeah, I, I will... Um, controller. I just want to say two more things about the Xbox One controller. The thumbsticks were also stepped back. They were loose, like the PS3 controller, but that also might just have been it being a show model. But to the Xbox One controller's testament, to, to its benefit, the impulse triggers and the way they did rumble is a game changer. It's amazing. And I can see Sony stealing the hell out of that, It too. is such an immersive experience having rumble specific in, it was like 12 different areas of the controller. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't just two on each side with varying degrees. There's rumble in the triggers. There's rumbles in the back where your fingers rest. There's rumble on the bottom of the points of the controller there's rumble in the center of the controller there's so much rumble and it's people rumble's been a kind of strange thing since the rumble pack of N64 oh no days. remember it's, it was the last gen thing according to sony for playstation 3 what do you mean yeah, they were over. you don't remember that that argument they didn't have rumble in, in the yeah that's right they, they yeah. thought it was over and that was that's what i'm talking about it, it was a very it was a very kind of What's the word? Um, it's it's one thirty in the morning. You, you yeah, are forgiven. Yeah, we're, we're slowing down. I'm going to cut some of these uh, breaks out. Um, it was a very subtle thing. Yeah. Rumble was always a very subtle thing. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you really think about too much when yeah. you play a game. But when, it, when, it's absent, when it's absent, you tend to notice it. Yeah. When I first got my hands on a PS3... The controller was very light. It was very oh my flimsy. God, and when I played things, thing. I couldn't connect. I tried to play the first Infamous game, and I was like, okay, I'm pressing buttons and things are happening. And it felt very distant. I felt very disconnected to the experience, and I couldn't finish the game. And I want, Don't feel bad. I, I, want, I, I want to stress <laughs> the, the benefits of Rumble by bringing up Grand Theft Auto V. Yes. Every little... Every pothole in the road and manhole you go over... You feel in it. the car, you feel it. You don't feel the whole controller rumble. You feel the side of the car or both sides of the car that went over those. The rumble strips on the side of the road, like we have in real life, are in the game and they're on the side of the freeway. And if you drive with your right wheels, your the right side of your controller will rumble. And it feels authentic. It feels like your car is off the road and you need to get back on the road. It feels so immersive to have rumble like that. And that is what killed the PS3 for me. No rumble. I know the DualShock... The DualShock 3.2, 3. whatever. Yeah, it was the Dual... It had rumble. Yeah. I, I didn't give it a chance because I didn't own a PS3 myself. Yeah, because the, uh, the original PlayStation 3 <coughs> controller was not called DualShock. It was called 6X controller. Right, that's it. Um, but yeah, the those impulse triggers... It sounds goofy. It really does, it does. you know? It, it but sounds goofy to gush you, over this kind of thing. You don't understand just the potential that that has to be such a game changer. Um, the issue that I, re the other thing that I wanted to, to talk about being annoyed with on the Xbox One controller was they made the thumbsticks smaller and that annoys the shit out of me. Yeah. It, it, it was hard to keep your fingers where you wanted them on the thumbstick when you went back to them after pressing a button. Mm -hmm. And now it's, now they're smaller and it just, I'm just like, it feels like one of those little mini mad cat controllers. Yeah. And with the I, thumbsticks. I was like, mm, I, I, don't, I don't like that very much. Um, I like the uh, the uh, texturized grips around the thumbsticks, though. Yeah, that was that was really nice. Uh, the the thing that really 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 bugged me about the Xbox One controller was on the 360 controller, as you're gripping it on the underside of the controller, it's a nice smooth curved 
um, shape, right? I mean, your hand contours, contours, your hand contours to the hand. The Xbox One controller, where where that grip is, they actually put a like a grip in there, so it's like a sharper edge, and it's not as it just doesn't feel as good to me, and and maybe that's just me. And and hopefully these were like alpha build controllers, and that's why they felt so off. Once again, this was the this early was back show, in August. early in August, and things could have changed. They could have just been, and it was right after Gamescom, Gamescom so. Yeah. They could have been from Gamescom. They probably were from Gamescom. It wouldn't surprise me a bit. I wish I had brought... Oh, yeah. I really wish I had brought some Purell. Some kind of hand sanitizer. Yeah. I got... I got ill. You got laryngitis. Uh, not laryngitis. Oh, you got yeah. tonsillitis. Uh, it was acute tonsillitis, and... Well, I kept telling you guys... There's something else. I kept telling you guys we needed to pack hand sanitizer. Nobody listened to me. <laughs> I paid for it. I was the only one that got sick. And fortunately, I didn't get anyone else sick. Yeah. Um, but it was pretty bad. Uh, when you go to expos, con, uh, cons, anything like that. When you go to Disneyland. When you one go of the mo- anywhere with a bunch of people. One of the most important things you take with you is hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer or gloves. Or just a bubble. Or just... Be Bubble Boy. Yeah. I'm going to be Bubble Boy next time. I mean, I and, and it sounds silly, you know, you, you can say... We're just going to wash our hands constantly. It's not that easy, folks. Yeah, Trust me. You, I just went to Disneyland. It's not that easy. You reflexively touch your face all the time, and that's what gets you. Right. It, it's not your fingers going in your mouth. It's it's touching your face. It, it's use some use some less than common sense and hand sanitize. Don't yeah. over hand sanitize. You will kill the bacteria in your hand that keeps your skin from falling off. I didn't know that. Yes, there is a grave possibility of over sanitizing. Maybe that's why I have eczema. <laughs> Maybe we should cut this part out. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Next on Sanitization Podcast. <laughs> so what else did we play at the expo? We played... We played Battlefield 4. We did play... Early, ba- okay. It was like an alpha, We right? played a... P- uh, I don't know if it was an alpha. We played an early build of the PC version of Battlefield 4. And oh my god, that game is so much fun. <laughs> it is. It is a whole bunch of fun. Uh, we played this silly little 32-player mode. That was only 16 players total, I think. And did not have commander mode. And it did not have commander mode. And it was it was like Conquest. There was mm-hmm. no... the We didn't get to mess with Levolution. It was a get in, play the game, and get out kind of situation. But so it I was, was a little like, disappointed, but it was still Battlefield. It was, it was still fun. The gunplay is amazing. The I, I love the addition of special weapons on the map. Mm-hmm. After playing the beta and playing it at Games... Uh, not Gamescom. Uh, <laughs> the GameStop, GameStop Expo. Yeah. I wish we had gone to Gamescom. Oh, Gamescom would have been fun. That was in Germany. Yeah, alone. alone. Come on now. Um, But yeah, it. uh, I liked the the giant grenade launcher thing. There were some other weapons on the ground that I got to play with at the at the the games. Game GameStop Expo. Expo That I didn't. (laughs) This is what I get for mentioning Gamescom, and for the fact that it's one thirty. Yeah. Um. It's Battlefield. It's it, ba- it and is, it is it is it is it is so much fun. Pure Battlefield, and it is just if you enjoy Battlefield, you will enjoy Battlefield Four. You really will. Uh, to take the words out of cynical Brit's mouth, Total Biscuit, um, Battlefield Four has nothing to fear from its competitors right now. It is top dog. It is, and uh, you know I know there are a lot of Collie co- Collie Collies. Collar. Let's call them Collies. Collie. From now on. I know there are a lot of Call of Duty fans out there going. Whoa, whoa, you know. Call of Duty's better. You know what? It, it, I'm sorry. And I, I do like Call of Duty. It doesn't hold a candle to Battlefield in terms of the tactical yeah. shooter. It just does not. If you want something simple and fun, run and gun, play Call of Duty. If you want to play as a team, play Battlefield. Yeah. It's and, tactical. And I'm not, and I'm not, again, I'm not trying to knock anybody. Uh, you know, play what you love. Yeah, play what you like. It, that's what video games it are about. It doesn't make you any less, you know, it doesn't make you stupid. To play no. Call of Duty. No. I would never say that. Not every single Call of Duty player is a meathead. Yeah. Racist boy, bastard. Racist you bastard, know. You know. Kid, uh, no. There are some people that are legitimately in there to have fun. Play what you love. Yeah. And, and play with friends. And don't torture other people for not playing what you love. And remember the mute button. Those racist bastards oh, yeah. won't know what hit them. The mute. Or a party. Or party systems. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we never play in, in game chat. No. Pretty much. I can't stand it. No, neither can I. Um, Let's see. What else did we play? We got... We annoyingly did not get to play Titanfall. Because Brian... It's all Brian's fault. It is all Brian's fault. Uh, he wanted to play the Battlefield 4 beta... The Battlefield... Booth, the Battlefield yeah, 4 the... booth first. 
and after the long line there, we didn't have enough time to reach the Titanfall line, and that is my biggest regret of the expo. Not being oh able my to god, play I was so disappointed to not play that game. We were standing in line near the end of the expo, and they cut off about three people in front of us, saying yeah. that they wouldn't have time for the rest of us. So we went and watched Plants vs. Zombies uh, Garden, Garden Warfare. Warfare. May I say how adorable and fun that game looks? It surprisingly does look good, and I'm I, I, and they haven't even really said much about the competitive part of it. Either. No, they haven't. They showed that little trailer of it, but which most, we've seen. Most of before. the things they talked about is the horde mode type thing, which is the main game, which just looks like so much fun. It does. It surprisingly looks fun, and so, I, I love how tongue in cheek and how unserious it is, and how much fun they make of things like Call of Duty and mm-hmm. things. And it, it's all in disco fun. zombie. Yeah, disco zombie, disco two, whatever. <laughs> It, it's all hilarious and it's all fun and I'm going to play it. Yeah, I absolutely will play is it. It's not free to play, is it? No, I don't think so. It'll be on, I think it's Xbox. It's going to be on Xbox One and I don't it's think it's going to be on. Xbox One exclusive. Uh-huh. And it'll be on Xbox 360, I think. We didn't research this. This was a spontaneous thing that we thought of that we played at the Expo. Yeah, um, well, we didn't play it. We saw hands-on. We yeah. saw behind closed doors demo. It was it was very nice. Yeah. Um, we also Tyler got some hands on with Disney Infinity. I did. It was it, you got a little more hands on, I think, than you wanted. <laughs> yeah, a little too many. <laughs> um, they had the nicest booth in terms of the people that were presenting it. They helped me understand the game because it's uh, I'm not a kid. Well, and being <laughs> being a it's um being it's, a Disney fan who goes to the parks a lot that's not surprising they train their people very yeah. well with to, i have to say to disney out. disney has pr down to a site oh t- they, to a um, science if you want to learn pr I, I, i'm getting on i'm getting off topic continue disney <laughs> infinity is out now i think it was out even at the expo um yeah. but they displayed it very nicely they had a bunch of their little figures and they explained how it works and it's all very simple it has a very kind of Minecraft creative mode feel to it. The toy box mode really, really intrigued me, and that's the only thing that interests me in Disney Infinity. If you really. can make Jack Sparrow ride in a race car with a cannon mounted to the back, you can do that while shooting at uh, the guys from Monsters Inc. Yeah, or you hell, if you if you want uh, if you want Peter Pan to fly on the back of Dum- Dumbo and shoot a cannonball at at Sleeping Beauty Castle from Disneyland, you can do that there too. I mean. The I'm talking too loud. Sorry. Um, the uh, level of customization in their toy box mode is really, really impressive. Yes, it, it's it's. Just don't get it on Wii U because it didn't work very well. <laughs> it, it kept crashing on me. It crashed <laughs> on me two or three times, which was funny. And I felt bad for the guy too. Yeah, he, no one else he was having really, the issue. He was really, really embarrassed. Yeah. You could tell. Part of it was my fault too. I put uh, I changed one of the little figurines when I wasn't supposed to, and it loaded a mini game. And it couldn't find who I was trying to use. Yeah. Because it was that character's specific Mini challenge game. or yeah, something. Challenge. And, um, yeah, that was funny. I didn't know what I was doing. Well, and you'd never held a... You'd ne- well, no, you, you, tried, I, I've you messed, tried the Wii U before. I've messed with the Wii U a little bit. Because you played, you played on my Wii U. Yeah, I've used I, the, I'm one of the five people in the world that actually owns one. <laughs> I, I played the, uh, one of the Mario games on the Wii U. and I, I like Mario. Mario's fun. Uh, how can you not like Mario? Except for it, Mario's especially... 3D Land. I, I don't... I don't... I'm sorry. I why? Yeah. Why does that exist? I, it's not as good as it should be. It it's it tries to breach the gap between Galaxy and the old Super Mario games, and the levels. There, if you like the short level Mario games of old, like uh, Super Mario Bros. Three, um, it's it's a lot like that, but it doesn't have as much charm as those games. Yeah, and I think that's something that Super Mario Bros. Bro Brothers. You, which whatever the one is on the Wii U, it nailed it. Yeah, that that, that, that is a that is fun. It, the important thing to note too is that that game also nails the challenge of the old Mario games. Whereas games like uh, the one on the 3DS that I can't think of the name 3D of. 3D Land. No, the the other one. <clears throat> um, I don't know. Uh, that do one to, is so simple. I do have to say, 3D Land does have some very unique things in it, which is like it has new enemies that I have never seen before. It has level design things that I haven't seen before. Um, I'm not too far into it, honestly. I'm at world three or four. But the annoying um, thing that you were telling me about is that the raccoon suit doesn't fly. Yeah, the raccoon suit doesn't fly. It what? Would, it would break every single level in the game if it could, which is understandable. But the game's story is based around the raccoon leaves <coughs> being blown away. And all of the enemies have... Ha- half the enemies have like raccoon tails and raccoon abilities, but you can't fly. 
That can, was like you can do the tail wag fall thing, but it you you can't fly. There and it's hard to sprint because you have to use the attack. The attack button is the sprint button, and there's two jump buttons. The control scheme for that game infuriates me to no end. I know there's pretty much always been two jump buttons in Mario games, at least the old ones on mm-hmm. the SNES. Oh yeah, and that's stuff, very old but school. I, it, there was at least a sprint button, kind of. Yeah. And it, it was. It, it, it was, used to be like the shoulder off. button or something. It was off. Yeah. yeah. It it didn't feel right, and they tried. They they had unique ideas. I, I applaud them for that because I don't think <clears> any of the new Mario games besides it have had anything unique. They keep rehashing the old ideas. Yeah, I understand that Sony or Sony. Sony. <laughs> Sony, 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 Sony wishes Mario. Cool. Sony wishes they made Mario. You heard um, it here first, folks. Uh, I I understand the need for Nintendo to rehash Mario a lot because that's their bread and butter. I would like to see them make some new things, and I would also like to see them revisit some of their old series that they haven't re- revived. Yeah. For one reason or another, Star Fox 64. <laughs> Please. I just want them to make a non-sucky Mario Party again. Yeah, I heard the new one's not that very good. I don't think there's been a good one since 6. I stopped caring about Mario Party after 2. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I compl- Because I don't play with people, so it, it kind of yeah. takes the fun out of it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for the Mario Party games, I'm sorry. And Super Smash Brothers, I was never big into Smash Brothers. Honestly. I love Super Smash Brothers, but I couldn't stand Brawl. I didn't like the, I didn't like playing it with a Wiimote. I didn't have one of the classic controllers. Playing was... with the GameCube controller seemed like it had a little bit of lag to it. It it just didn't work for me. No, we'll see how the. It was fun to play as Solid Snake. I have to say it was fun. It, to play and hide in the cardboard snake. box. Hide in the cardboard box. Launch a homing missile at people. And the only reason they can do that is uh, they had that one GameCube exclusive exclusive game that I can't remember the name of right now. Yeah, they had the um, they had a, a re-release of Solid of the first two games mm. on the GameCube. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, once again, we got a little off topic. What else did we play? It seems it seems like we played more. But I can't quite remember everything. We tried to play the crew. We didn't get there. Yeah, that, in that, time. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm not a racer. I'm not. I'm not into racers. But like I was telling you guys earlier about Midtown Madness, I love just driving around an open world. Yeah, free doing own, crazy free crap. Car games are our bread and butter. It's one of the main things we share as nostalgic. Mm-hmm. And it is so much fun. It's so much fun. Burnout Paradise around. was just a blast. Unfortunately, yeah. the thing that killed it for the three of us was the fact that all Smash of the updates. updates. Were like a gig. <laughs> yeah, and it would keep the old ones even though they're out of date. And yeah, the which is annoying. Hard drive, so I yeah, the, the updates were done really, really poorly for that yeah, game. And you'll notice there's not another Burnout game coming. <laughs> which makes me sad. I want them to go back to the days... I mean, I, I like the free roam, but I also love the closed circuit aspect of the driving game on yeah. it. I hear Burnout Revenge was really, really good. and I never Revenge was amazing. I'm going to have to try it at some point. I'm, just, I'm not a big closed circuit... Uh, racing person says he who owns Forza 2 through 4. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you own 4 now? Or I is 5 the new one? 5 is five's the new one. 5 is the new one. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, five, 5 is the one coming out with Xbox One. Yeah. Yeah. I won't be buying that. Um, don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> they screwed up the auction house. I'm sorry, people, but if you could not figure out that locking your art means that no one can copy it, it's not that complicated. Anyway. Um... But yeah, I need to try Burnout Revenge. I'm just not that big into, into circuit racers. Um, but the game that Criterion really needs to bring back is Black. Yes, they need to redo Black. Criterion. The uh, that, Not that you're listening to us, but God damn it, bring back Black. I know you had that nice game designer who left, who was the lead designer on Black, and he made that spiritual successor, but that game was that balls. Was ass. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, mister. You had a great vision with Black, but... I don't even remember what the game was called, but it's spiritual successor. It was ass. <laughs> yeah, trying to take the story out of the game and make it all about the fun didn't work out the way you planned. Mm-mm. I wish it had been better, and I hope you try again. I wonder what Criterion's up to right now. They haven't said a word. <laughs> no, they've in a been long very, time. very quiet. I'm really hoping for a new burnout. I don't think you're going to see a new burnout anytime soon. That makes me sad. Yeah. Um. Uh, I don't think we played... You know, now that I think about it, I don't think we played anything else really at the Expo. It was a very short... It was... There wasn't it was very short. Time. If I had any complaint about the GameStop Expo, it was too short. Yeah, they only had... It was only a one-day Expo, and it really needs to be longer than that. I'd like to see it be maybe E3 length, three days. Yeah, it needs to be at least two days. 
because we didn't have enough time to go through half of the things there. And there were so many things that we wanted to do. Of course, we did spend way too much time walking around trying to figure yeah. out where everything was. That took a great deal of time. Yeah. Um. Oh, Rise. We haven't uh, talked about Rise. Uh, well, Tyler had a bad experience with Rise. Uh, Brian and I, I'm so excited for that game. Okay, let me detail. The line, it looked short. The we line was, was we stupidly were, long. We were standing there. It was Disneyland. It, it, Literally. <laughs> it, it looked short, but it, you stood there for so long. And it was for the two-player co-op mode. And it, it's like a horde mode kind of thing in a coliseum, whatever. And so we were standing there for an hour. And uh, I don't know. Was it an hour? Did I, we really stay there for an hour? It was a long time. Yeah, because we spent, we spent a lot of that time playing around with the impulse triggers. Yeah, because that was right next to Rise, which was nice. Um, Not Rise, the controller. Um, right. So okay. I got to go. His opinion. Not mine. Yes. This is just me because I got to go first, and with, he had a really, really crap experience. I, I'm getting to that. Yeah, I'm getting to that. So, um, I got up there with my girlfriend who was with us, and we we got onto one of the stations that was free, and we had been watching people play, and they had these extravagantly looking levels with like jungles and marshes, and there was like there were at least four different levels that we saw. And one of them was this little dinky introductory level that everyone had, before us had played before it switched over to one of these unique levels. And when we got up there, it was that really bland level with stone floors and stone columns. Every once in a while it was very boring looking and dreary. And it, there were traps all over the goddamn place that would trap the enemies that came two at a time. Two at a time! And they would kill themselves in the traps or stick themselves in the traps and we couldn't get them out. They had to fight their own ways out of the traps or keep themselves from getting set on fire. So we got to kill about three waves of these dudes, which was two at a time, so we killed six. We killed six dudes. And I didn't even get to do any finishers because I never even got a prompt. Well, the prompt was basically removed. Basically what it was was there was an outline along the enemy and I know, was, that never appeared. That never appeared for you? No, they would just die instantly because they were damaged so much from the traps. One mm. hit would kill them. Oh, okay, I see. And when that ended, the and the next wave started, and or the next round started, and it switched over to the jungle level or whatever. And The real part, the real yeah, demo. The real part of the demo where you actually have an objective besides go over and destroy these useless things while two enemies struggle all the way across the map on these traps. And... The the guy at the booth comes up to us and says, the line is really long. We have to limit people to one round. And we had only been there two minutes. Yeah, I don't think it the was, guy realized it that... It was two minutes. I don't think the guy realized that you hadn't gone through the, actu the yeah. actual game yet. Yeah, the people before us who we were watching still hadn't finished their run. And we got shoved out of the booth. You really should have complained about that. I should have, but I was I was too pissed. I just walked away. And Jack and Brian picked up where we left off. And yeah, because we didn't get to do for, the tutorial. Yeah, they got initially. to play for like 10, 15 minutes. Not 10, 15 minutes, yeah. Uh, what Brian and I played was an absolute blast. And I was not expecting that. I expected Rise to be very, very boring and very, very QTE. And it's not. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. But uh, I don't know how well it will do in the vacuum of what all is releasing. Uh, because and a lot of people are, are thinking that it's like Call of Duty Rome. It's really it's really not. Um, but I just I had a lot of fun with it. The combat felt very very satisfying. Unfortunately, the rumble triggers weren't activated for their demo. Um, but it was still a very fun demo. There was a moment uh, where you had to. And I'm sorry, my allergies are going kind of berserk. Uh, there was a moment where you were approaching an area of guys that were throwing spears at you and you had to kind of juggle between holding up your shield and throwing spears at the guys. And it was done really, really well. I'm I, literally playing that demo at the expo made me go from, eh, I really don't care. Maybe I'll rent it to I'm pre-ordering it. And I pre-ordered it when I got home. And I'm boycotting it. <laughs> hey, it's not Rise's fault. It's the Microsoft employee's fault. So you should be boycotting all of Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm renting it because I didn't get a fair demo. <laughs> yeah. And you can always borrow my copy because yeah. you can do that now on Xbox One. Yay! Yay for repealing ideas. Well, dumb ideas. They they weren't exactly dumb. They were just... They expected too much of people. Well, here's the thing, okay? 
and I, I get that there are people that cling to their discs, and I'm one of them. Um, so I'm not knocking those people because I'm one of them. If you really want to go that route where you can't share and do that stuff, and you really want to have a non uh, system where there is no used games, then you need to start really, really, really pushing digital distribution. Well, they did because they were they tried so hard to make a Steam like system on the console. Unfortunately, the the customers, the the base of people who are going to buy the said system aren't into that. I don't know that that's they want a more owned situation than they have with Steam. They I don't know that that's necessarily. I don't know if that's necessarily true, and I'll tell you why. What is the one thing that Steam does that the consoles don't do? They have insane sales. Yes, you can pick up a sixty dollar game for ten dollars on Steam. Consoles do not do sales like that. Now, if you were to talk, if you were to say that on the PlayStation Four. You can go out and buy Killzone Shadowfall for sixty dollars, but if you download it from the PlayStation Network, it's only forty. That's an incredible deal. People will start switching over to digital, but they're not doing it because they can't. And I understand gaming budgets, developing these games, it's ridiculously, stupidly expensive. But you've got if you really want people to start adopting digital, you've got to give them some incentives, and I think Steam has done that. Yes. All right, but um, I think it's time to wrap up that segment. This is dr- this is going this on is going longer. on way too long. Yeah. And let us, I think it's time to finish up with our. Uh, oh yeah, the game stories. Our ga- game stories. I think we're going to call it our co-op catastrophes. <laughs> and there have been f- quite a few. We have a few fresh in our memories, and there's a few more that we can detail. But we'll do one. We'll, uh, do you want to just one for you, one for me, or just do one? Um, we'll start off with one okay. that includes both of us, and if. And if you listeners have any of your hilarious mishaps in video games, old or new, please send them to us and we will make this a longer segment with your mishaps. Fortunately, or hopefully it will be on a little bit shorter show. We're still we're still working out the bugs. Guys. There was a lot of news and we're sorry. Yeah, we well, I mean, we're, we're starting this up in a, in a time right before Next Gen, so there was a lot of news. So. Oh, yeah. Ho- uh, come the holidays, after the holidays, after Christmas, it's going to die down. Yes. Okay, so what story are we, are we going Let's on see. about? Let's see. I think, let's see, who wants to get the shit stick? The shit stick? Yeah, which, which one of us do we want to, um, Oh, okay. Uh, do we want to have egg on our face? God. We can flip a coin. Well, the only one that I can think of for me was Carmona. Exactly. There's Carmona, there's the digestive tea for me. Yeah, and then there's uh, uh, the Terraria thing. Those the Terraria the thing, that, that was, that, yeah, that's more egg on my face. Um, what do you think? We can go ahead and do me first. Okay. This because fine. Because, uh, it's only fair, since I right. only seem to have one that sticks out in our mind. Alright, I got this one covered. <laughs> so, for those of you that don't know, Mercenaries 2, World in Flames, that's his name right? World I in Flames? So. Something like that? It was an amazing game. It like was co-op buggy was, as shit. It was buggy as shit, it got poor reviews, but I don't care, it is one it of is the so loves of my life. I, I still own that game. That game is so much fun. I can't find mine. I don't think I sold you to- it. You, sold, you told me you sold it. Oh, I think I had to sell it. That's yeah. right. I needed money at one point. Um, uh, so, spoiler alert. I don't know if anyone cares. The very end of the game, you are chasing the big bad guy in a car. He's in a car. You're in a car. You're chasing him down. And you bust we- through roadblocks. And you're being shot at by tanks that come out of fucking nowhere. I forgot that It's this all dark and dreary. Yeah, it was the very end of the game. It's dark and dreary. The whole point of the game is to capture these high-value targets that are alive. And so you're chasing down the final boss, the last guy. And you get more money if you capture them and you don't kill them. And by the way, uh, spoiler alert, this this game is over five years old. I think we've hit the statute of limitations. (laughs) That sucks spoilers. You you people just kind of deal with it. I don't think you guys can find it anywhere. Good luck with that. Game Um, fly. Well, game fly, yeah. Anyway, I keep interrupting. Anyway, so we're chasing him down. At some point, our car explodes. And we get sent flying, and I get it first, and we're split up. So I get in my car, and he tries to find one for him. And I have to keep going, and I chase down Carmona. I pit him, spin his car out. He gets out and starts running. I chase him down. I punch him in the back of the head, and I tie him up. And the cut, the audio cutscene is rolling about how we captured Carmona and how the next thing we have to do is show, show the country that we've captured their dictator and whatever, however that scene goes. And... The next thing I know, Jack comes running up alongside the road after he parked his car all the way at the top of the hill. 
and he's just <laughs> running, running towards me. And I could tell within, I couldn't tell until later. But looking back on it now, I, what was going through his head, and you'll agree with me, was I'll save you. Yes. And I'm, my back is turned because I Carmona, couldn't tell. My back was turned with Carmona in the corner of my screen. I'm feeling all triumphant, victorious. I'm like, yes, I did this. <laughs> we have stopped the tyranny of this dictator. And I see just come into the side of my screen right next to Carmona, blocking my entire screen. Jack's character just standing there and finishing his run cycle stops and then i see the most terrifying thing in the world the elbow come out <laughs> he starts his melee carmona's on his knees general carmona on his knees tied up worthless defenseless no longer a threat to anyone <laughs> and jack just punches him to death <laughs> and we lose the huge capture reward <laughs> That was bigger than any sum we could have had. We could have dropped all of the bombs. And in my defense, what happened, you were absolutely right. I did not see the fight that you had gone yes. through to subdue him. So I assumed you were still fighting him. And I ran up and I did not... I assumed you had knocked him down or something. I didn't think that he... I didn't realize he was tied up. So I was just like, I'll save you, punch! And you just My went, first reaction what was, are no, you doing? No, 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 no. I have to redo my reaction. I turned around and went, what are you doing? You just punched General Carmona in the face! <laughs> Why? <laughs> and I yelled at him for like five minutes. The, the the people were talking on the radio about how we got him. Okay, so here's the thing. It, they weren't talking on the radio for me because I would have realized what was going on at that point. <laughs> so it's partially the game's fault. <laughs> I choose to blame the game. But yeah, so that is our that is one of our hilarious co-op catastrophes. And yes. God, was it a catastrophe. By the way, if you do have a chance to play Mercenaries 2, it is a buggy as shit game, but it is so much fun, especially with friends. Yes, go back to it, play it. It's fun. Yeah, it's it's some derpy fun. Some of my favorite sequences were fighting on the oil rigs. Oh yeah, Those fighting on the oil rigs. But it, it's a good old game. Uh, if you can find it, or if you still have it in your library, go back to it. Give it another try. Nostalgia. It's fun. It's yeah, one of my favorite old games. Make sure you play it with friends. Yes, because it, it is. It's one of those games where it's it's a little bit silly to play by yourself, but if you play it with friends, it is a blast. Well, it's a little bit silly to play by yourself unless you're like me. When I play by myself, I go to I went would go to the American army base, steal one of the cargo lift helicopters, and then just fly around the map, randomly pick up innocent people's cars and fling them across the map. That was so much fun. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun with that game. And the other thing, doesn't that game have full destructibility? Yes, you could blow up buildings. Yeah. With anything. You could drop nukes. It it was so much fun. Yeah. Highly recommended. All right, so we should probably wrap this up. Yes. Uh, thank you for listening to our stories, our stupid, our opinions, everything. Do we have anything we need to plug? Um, yeah, there's our Twitter handles. <clears throat> you can find updates, news, stupid talk, uh, retweets, favorites, things, all sorts of things. Uh, updates about my YouTube channel. Uh, I on my, my Twitter handle is at Fox underscore Trot. Uh, F-A-W-K-E-S underscore T-R-O-T. Um... And my YouTube channel is pretty much the same thing. There's a link to it in my Twitter profile. If and we'll, you, if you we'll put links. I, I think we can put links to both of these, all, all of these things, in the actual show notes for you guys. But we also want to be able to make sure that we vocalize this. Um, I, as for things that I'll be working on... Uh, are you going to be doing any videos or any streams or anything in the in the recent in the near future? Um, I think I have some plans for some more let's plays in the future. Some with Jack, some with Michael, some more. Um, any have... PS4? <laughs> yes, I will try to be doing a review of Call of Duty uh, Ghosts when I get it from GameFly. I will be trying to do the stream thing to stream some of it, and I will use some of the footage in a review and. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that'll turn out well. As for anything that I'm working on, I've been working on since the <laughs> GameStop Expo. <clears throat> my gosh, my voice doesn't like me tonight. Since the GameStop Expo, I've been working on uh, my Xbox One hands-on preview. <laughs> I'm a little late with this, but I hope to get that up before before soon. Before soon. Before soon. Before soon. That, that's so not the time. yesterday. Yeah. Well, uh, I hope to get that before get that out before too long. Uh, 
I will definitely get it out before the Xbox One launches, because <laughs> otherwise it'll be silly. Um, I do have a PlayStation 4 hands-on uh, on my IGN blog. And you can find that, I wrote it down here somewhere, where is it? Here we go. You can find that at www.ign.com slash blogs slash inuhanyu1701. That's I-N-U-H-A-N-Y-O-U-1701. Is that a forward slash or a backslash? I have no idea. I never understood those things. Yeah. Whatever is normally on the internet for slashes. Um, you can find me on Twitter at game night that's g-a-y-m-e underscore k-n-i-g-h-t and yes for those wondering i am gay so i'm not trying to be like cruel or mean to gay people i'm actually gay so that is why that's my twitter handle he is allowed i'm allowed gay people can be racist to gay people right is it racism (laughs) i don't know anyway uh um, ryan is m-i-a from everything so sorry yeah, sorry. He's not that interesting anyway. <laughs> um, he's not here. We can talk shit about him. He's dead. So uh, yeah, we will be available on iTunes, if I can get that working, <laughs> which that's going to be our main medium, so I better get that working. This will also, if you're not watching this on YouTube right now, this will somehow be up on YouTube. I hope you've just been listening to the background, because I have no, I, I'm sorry, but there's no video to put over this. Um, well, I'm going to try to get us on Android Marketplace. I will try to get us on Xbox Music, but I have honestly have no idea how to do that, so I've got to research it. We will put this up wherever we can. Yeah, absolutely. And it will also, of course, be posted on my blog at IGN. And again, that link is IGN.com slash blogs slash Inuhanyu1701. Um, if you want to be part of the show, you can ask us questions. You can give us feedbacks or tips. Or if you just want to tell us how terrible we are, please don't do that. Um... Or please do. We'll, we accept any kind of feedback. Well, as long as you're criticism. as long as you're constructive of it. If, if you want you're to call not, us gay noob fags, uh, yeah, go you're going to get deleted. So uh, you're not going to phase us. So you're not going to bother us. If we you're will keep call doing what we do, yeah, we're just going to keep doing it. Uh, if you want to give us that feedback for now, you can email us. Email me at uh, game night at gmail dot com. Uh, there's not going to be an underscore because Gmail doesn't allow underscores. So it's just all one word, game night at gmail.com, G-A-Y-M-E-K-N-I-G-H-T at gmail.com. And be sure to put whatever the name of our podcast is in the subject line so I oh, don't yeah. just delete you uh, on site. So uh, our next show is going to be probably two weeks. Probably in two weeks after we have some nice good time with the uh, PS4. And, and probably the X- possibly a little possibly bit of the, the X- I won't have the Xbox One because that's not, I'm not pick, picking that up at the store. Ah. Um, we that we might give it a little bit more time so we can get some hands on with the Xbox One so we can get some nice uh, back and forth about it. Right, uh, or we might do a split episode so it's not oh, yeah, three true. hours long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like this one has been. This one is extremely long. We hope you've had fun what, listening to this throughout your day, whether you've throughout, been yeah. having alone time in front of your computer with this in the background, you strange sick person. Or if you've been listening to this in the shower, you strange sick person. Or just in well, the car they, they, they can't help it. We we have really sexy voices. Oh yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway. Or if for some ungodly reason you've been stuck in traffic for three hours. Yeah. To and from work. Is it, is no. it traffic? You could have listened to this whole thing. Or you could be driving from Phoenix to Disneyland, which takes six hours, by the way, folks. A fun fact of the day. Um, and on that note. Uh, so we are still working on the record and posting dates, so stay tuned to our Twitter feeds. Yes. Uh, probably I'll be the one tweet, uh, well, I guess we both will technically be the yeah. one tweeting out. Oh, yeah. Um, They'll be out on both Twitters, and I'll probably have a small video posted every single time on YouTube if I don't start hosting it on YouTube myself. And I believe we will have a website for this podcast, but that is still TBD. Yeah, we'll have We're something, s- we'll have something concrete for you next time with any luck. Yeah, we apologize for... How, uh, it's a little unorganized, but it's our first one. So, yeah. So I hope you'll you'll cut us some slack. So thank you guys. Stick with us, and please. Gals. Give us some feedback. Please, please stick with us. We'd really, really appreciate it. Thank you all so much. And I think that wraps it up. Yeah, that wraps it up. Have a good night, everybody, or a good day, whatever time. We will see you is. next time, except for Brian, because he died. Yeah. All right. Bye.